Hello my friends and welcome to the Heroes of Might and Magic 3 Spells tier list. A few months ago I did a video where I uh, crammed all of the creatures from the game into a single tier list. And based on the feedback I got from that video I thought it would be fun to do the same thing again with every single spell in the game. Uh, there's a link to the uh, creatures version in the description below if you're interested in that. Um, what I learned from the last video though is just to make sure that I really explain up front um, what type of Heroes 3 I'm playing. Um, I'm a massive fan of the you know, nostalgia and um, Heroes 3 for me is a very nostalgic experience and I really enjoy playing the original version of the game. So essentially the version that you would download off good old games, the patched uh, Shadow of Death uh, version I think technically is what it is. I have massive respect for the uh, Horn of the Abyss and all of the community development. I'm in awe of the guys who do that stuff and generally in massive agreement with a lot of the balance changes that have been made and, and all of that, 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 that kind of thing. So not meaning any disrespect to um, uh, the, the, that, and, and for those of you who prefer the Horn, uh, Horn of the Abyss version. Um, hopefully a lot of my rankings and ratings and conversation will carry over. Obviously some of the spells are modified uh, in the community patches, but anyway, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit as we go. So to get started... Um, before we crack in, just to say a little bit about how we're going to figure out the rankings. So the question is, what makes a spell special in this game? And what makes a, a spell useless? So as a starting point, my starting point generally is going to be whether or not the spell gets cast. So does the spell actually get cast? from the time that it's unlocked. So some spells are unlocked very early in the game, such as Magic Arrow that we're, we've got here. Others you don't get until the very late game. Level five spells that are much harder to unlock. Um, critically though, if, you're getting, if the spell is getting cast and it's getting cast frequently and regularly long into the mid game or late game, in the case of, a, of, of an early spell, it's gonna find its way up the tier list. For spells that arrive early in the game and never get cast and just take up room in your spell book that you never and you never want to use them they're the ones that are going to find their way down into the E's and F's so um, we'll talk a bit more about that as we go starting off with good old magic arrow now magic arrow is a very special spell it has um, a footprint across all four of the schools of magic so air water fire and earth and that's the order that we're going to be going through the schools I'm going to work out my way through from level one up to level five, cycling uh, back through the four schools each time. Uh, so we've got the air version of Magic Arrow shown here for demonstration purposes. Magic Arrow is a really ubiquitous spell. I mean, you, you're you very, very happy for your heroes in the first few weeks to know this spell. You want them to know this spell. If you know it, you will cast it. You'll use it uh, to help uh, clean up um, wandering monsters in the early game, unlocking different areas. In the late game, you can still sometimes find yourself casting this just to tidy up in a fight that you've already won where you don't want to waste a lot of spell points. So yeah, the spell is absolutely at least a C. Um, I think that you know, you're not going to break the game with it. Um, it's not going to be your favorite thing all the way through to the end game. Somewhere in the B- minus category for now. Uh, I might need to do a tweak and move some spells around as we go once we see how many other spells want to find their way to these sort of middling regions. But Magic Arrow, a really solid start, um, regardless of which school, of course, it's coming from. Uh, now, the first air spell we're going to talk about proper is Haste. Um, this is kind of a poster child spell for the school of air. Gives a single ally plus three speed. And then as you uh, upgrade your uh, knowledge of air magic, you go to advanced air magic, goes up to plus six, but then the real killer is when you get to expert air magic and it's plus six speed to all seven stacks uh, of creatures in your army, which is extremely powerful. So we've got a, a spell that it's useful. It's not as useful as magic arrow on day one, I wouldn't say, uh, on in week one and week two, not really. Uh, but it's still going to be, it's going to see uh, play in its basic mode and in its advanced mode. Um but then it's going to be very, very relevant, uh, potentially, in the late game. With a fully hasted army of plus six, you make sure that you get the first turn uh, in the subsequent rounds of the combat. 
you're going to be able to fly over walls in, in, in one go when you're doing a siege. You're going to be able to engage uh, otherwise powerful but slower um, mid-range units, something like, for example, a Minotaur or Pit Lord or something like that. You're going to get them all the way over to the other side of the battlefield uh, immediately and engaging with the, the the targets on the other side that might be archers or, or, or whatever they are. So as a general strategy, just making all of you guys really fast, getting the first turn, getting to act sooner, alpha striking your opponent, um, really, really useful spell. Um, there's a special relationship this spell has with slow as well in the earth school, and we're going to talk about slow uh, pretty soon. I think haste, uh, it's just, it's too prominent. It shows up everywhere. You're going to cast it frequently. Tentative A- minus um, for haste. Okay, next on the list is View Air. View Air is an adventure map spell. You don't cast it in combat, and what it does is reveals the location of unclaimed artifacts. This can be quite handy. I tend to end up using it mainly to try to decode what bits of the map still exist. So uh, on the surface world, there's ocean where there aren't any artifacts, and underground, there's big tracts of the underground that are just, you know, where there are no underground caverns. When you cast View Air and it shows you where the remaining artifacts are, you get a sense of where the rest of the map is. It's not really much more useful than that beyond that. Takes up a slot uh, in level one, so it, you build your Mage Guild, you get View Air, and you're kind of going, you know, it's okay. Not uncastable, not useless, it's like one spell point, a handy thing to sometimes do during the game. Um, I think we're down in the D category for View Air, uh, for that reason. Okay, let's keep moving on. Uh, we're going to... This is actually all of the level 1 uh, spells that the Air School has. It's got a big pile of level 2 spells that we'll cycle back to, but we're going to move on to level 1 in the Water School, and the first cab off the rank is Bless. Bless is kind of the haste of, of water. It's... A spell that causes a single uh, one of your allied stacks to deal maximum damage in combat, and there are some units that have um, a range, uh, most units have a range of combat from minimum to maximum that they'll deal, uh, and Bless replaces that and replaces that with the maximum, which is obviously really great for units that have a wide spread, so there are certain units like Lizard Warriors, um, ironically Cerberus uh, and Hellhounds, uh, in the Inferno, uh, which for flavor reasons I tend not to cast Bless on, even though I really, really want to <laughs> uh, whenever I have the opportunity to. Uh, which is handy and okay. Uh, it's kind of like hasting a single stack for plus three at a basic level. It's just okay. It's not too bad. When you get up to expert water magic, Bless affects the entire battle, your entire army, the same way Haste does, and it's really excellent uh, when, when that happens. So it's in a similar category to Haste. Um, I think it might be ever so slightly better than Haste for that reason. Uh, you know, um, it's a spell that you cast it when it comes online. Um, you won't be immensely happy casting it once it's online at, 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 in, in the early stages of the game, but by the late stages of the game, you're going to still be regularly casting it. So it's a great spell. It's a really good spell. And um, I'm going to give it an A. Again, I might demote them both to B+. Plus. I'm just going to see, because there's a lot of spells I like a lot. And this tier list might actually end up being a little overloaded at the top. So I reserve the right to still just maybe tweak with these a little bit. Okay. Next spell in the uh, level 1 of the Water School is Cure. Q is a really cool spell, uh, and a, a very, very uh, important utility spell. Um, Cure heals your uh, creature uh, or creature stack for a small amount, but the main thing it does is it removes all negative status effects. So if your units have been you know, slowed, cursed, uh, blinded, um, whatever it might be, Cure undoes all of that, which really, for an enemy hero, uh, if an enemy hero has expert curse, cursing your whole army, if you're an expert water mage, you can cast expert cure and undo the curse, uh, and effectively it's a it's a wash. Uh, un undo that and allow the fight to continue. Um, extremely useful and important to have cure in your bag of tricks 
uh, as a <clears throat> as a spellcaster, even if you're not an expert water mage. I think it's a solid B. Um, I don't. I'm not desperate for it early in the game. I'm going to pick it up at some point later in the game, and, I'm, and it'll find some use somewhere in the sort of vicinity uh, for uh, cure. Um, related to cure is dispel. Okay, so dispel and cure basically do this. Well, they do a similar job. So what dispel does is it removes all status effects from all troops on the battlefield. So again, if we're in that scenario uh, that we just talked about where your whole army's been cursed, Dispel does the same job that Cure does. Cure actually is a little bit better because it gives you a little bit of a HP recovery effect as well. Uh, but what Dispel also does is it debuffs all of the enemy's buffs uh, at the same time. So it it's very much a question of circumstance and situation as to which of these two uh, is going to be more preferable. And of course, an expert water mage is almost certainly going to know both of them. Uh, anyway, uh, when they're when they tend to be casting them towards the mid late game is though really where this comes alive. You're not going to be doing a lot of curing and dispelling in the early game, and I think for that reason they need to be. Uh, they are they are they can be crucial though in a, in a late game battle. Expert dispel when your opponent's done something nasty to your army. Uh, I'll, I'm going to leave them here. I'm going to leave them here in the B minus next to the magic arrow for now. Um, okay. Uh, I'm just going to get my, get my hands on each icon as I drag them over here. So Protection from Water, this is the first of the Protection series. Um, protection from Water protects or reduces the damage that your units take from incoming water spells. Here's the thing. There aren't many incoming water damage spells. Ice Bolt is about as bad as it gets. And Ice Bolt only affects one stack of monsters. As you become an expert water mage... When you cast the protection, it will protect your entire army from damage from water spells. But the Ice Bolt can only attack one creature at a time. So sadly, I don't think I've ever cast this. I've never wanted it. On top of that, it's a level 1 spell, which means when I'm in my Mage Guild, I'm finally saved the 2,000 gold I need to build a Mage Guild. Goody, let's go for it. Man, I'm a Water Mage. I really hope I get Magic Arrow. I'm really hoping I get Bless. Let's see what we get. Roll the thing, open up the thing. What have you got after you've built your Mage Guild? Protection from water. You are very disappointed and you're never casting it. So this spell actually might be the worst spell in the game. It's going to be hard to uh, to beat. Let me. I moved it so far down that um, it's behind my camera. <laughs> um... This might be the worst of the four protections, actually, just due to the fact that water doesn't do any damage. <laughs> like, not really, right? It doesn't really do damage, uh, except with Ice Bolt. Frost Ring. I'm not going to bother protecting my soldiers against that. I've got, I'm going to have something else better I can do. Um, worth to say, actually, in, when it comes to combat, we're, everything we've talked about here is a combat spell except for View Air. The key thing, a, a pivotal point uh, around the game design that's worth really calling out here is that every hero may only cast one spell per turn, no exceptions. So even like the lowliest, you know, ridiculous hero who's barely bought himself a spell book and has ten spell points, up against a, a level twenty wizard who has he's an expert in all the schools of magic and he knows all of the amazing level five spells, they can only both cast one spell per turn, and it's one of the reasons why Dispel and Cure are actually quite important spells. Um, uh, there's no artifact in the vanilla game that I'm aware of that breaks that rule, that allows a, a wizard or a, a hero, sorry, to, um, to cast more than one spell per turn. And that's how and why it comes to pass that the spells, even the junior spells in the level one, can be so important. Um, because if, if you are... Choosing one spell in a given turn, it means by definition you're not choosing all of your other spells. So you're choosing this spell to the exclusion of other spells. Uh, and that's just, to, I suppose, to double down on what I was saying earlier, this point about how we can measure virtue based on whether or not the thing gets cast. As opposed to in other games, other fantasy games, where your hero might have four or seven things he could do on a turn, 
and he might cast three or four spells and attack with a few monsters or whatever it might be. Um, because you can only pick one spell, um, the one you pick is it's going to have to be pretty special, right? Especially in the late game when it's competing against all of the other spells in the game or in, in your spell book. Protection from water, anyway, that was a bit of a sidecar. Protection from water, um, sadly, worst of the worst um, and total garbage. This uh, spell coming up next is Summon Boat, another adventure spell map. You can stand on the coastline um, with your water mage and conjure a boat into existence out of nowhere. Now this is a really handy spell, really, really useful. Um, I've used it many times um, to try to get from one... uh, location to another in a situation where I don't have access to the underground or I can't uh, find, find, you know, m- m- move and unlock other areas. It's like, well, one thing I could do um, is summon a boat and, uh, and and move on over. Boats are expensive, especially in the early game. A thousand gold and ten wood, that's, that's a lot, you know, especially if you are playing on a resource-constrained start, which is the start that I would pref- generally tend to prefer playing on. Um, so summon boat, very, very handy spell. Um, solid C plus for summon boat. Am I excited? Am I ecstatic when I find it in my mage guild? Not ecstatic, but I'm but I'm happy. Like I like it. It's a good spell. So I was actually surprised. To, I had to just check there that summon boat is level one. It is a level one water spell. I don't know uh, if anyone else might be surprised to find that out. Um, let's move on. The third school of magic we're going to be talking about is fire. And the first spell in that school we'll talk about is Bloodlust. Now, Bloodlust, what that does is it increases the hand-to-hand damage uh, caused by your units in combat. Um, And it does have a noticeable effect. Like, if you're in a situation where you have high damage output uh, creatures, Bloodlust can be a good way of sort of doubling down on that and trying to end the fight quickly. And this is a bit of a theme that runs through the entire... Fire school, bit of a two-edged sword, I think, as in terms of a virtue for a particular school, as we'll as we'll talk about later when we we get to some of the um, nastier spells later on. Uh, and similar to bless and haste, it has this thing where yeah, you can bloodlust one of your guys, one of your creature stacks. If you've got one big stack, you can bloodlust it and be pretty happy. Kind of does a similar job to to what, to what bless does. But in the late game, if you're an expert fire mage, cast Bloodlust, you will Bloodlust your entire team. Uh, So depending on your army composition, that can be uh, very, very good. All else equal, I'd probably prefer to just bless them. Um, It's probably going to be better. It it, it tends to feel better. Um, But Bloodlust and then expertly Bloodlusting everyone in the late game. How excited am I when I unlock Bloodlust in the early game? Not very... And then do I use it a lot? Not really. I don't use it a lot. Um, It tends to get out-competed by other things I could be doing instead. Um, But it's okay. It's it's castable. It sees play. So it can can be a C. It's not a D uh, for me. Now, weirdly, the Fire School has two of these kind of poster child spells. There's another one here. Curse, level one uh, fire spell. What this does is the opposite of bless. So curse is the c- sort of counter spell to bless. If if you uh, curse a blessed unit, the bless is deleted and replaced with curse. Instead of dealing maximum damage in combat, they'll deal minimum damage in combat. Uh, now, again, in the early game, depending on what monsters you're up against, cursing a single enemy stack of monsters, not useless, not you know, incredibly amazing, but become an expert fire mage and you can curse the entire army and it's actually really strong. It's really, really strong when that happens. Um, yeah, so I think it probably belongs in the same conversation as Bless uh, in terms of... These are probably a little bit too high. Uh, are they? Well, we don't have it. I mean, the spells list isn't as big as the creatures list. I'm going to leave these these in the A- minus category, right? For spells that have good utility uh, in the early and mid-game, but then at expert when you're an expert in the school, really switch on, and you're going to cast them quite frequently uh, during the game, uh, right the way through to the end of the game, potentially. Uh, there's lots of times I'm playing a late game with an expert fire mage doing expert curse on turn one or turn two is just really part of your routine. So it's a, it's, it's a good spell uh, for that reason. 
Protection from fire? Uh, this one it has the same disease as protection from water, except at least the fire school has some damage in it, right? There's fireball, inferno... Um, I've never used it in an Armageddon scenario. <laughs> um, but another beef I have with the fire school is that the, it doesn't have the boutique damage dealing that you, you would expect fire as a school to have. Um, all four of these spells are more or less useless. This one's probably a lot less useless than Protection from Water. It might have some application. I might even promote it. There, there we go. I'll give it some kind of... I'll give it some sort of life above the F tier. You might cast it. I don't know if it's a thing... You know, versus Armageddon. I haven't fought... You know, I haven't found a situation where I'm like, oh man, I wish I had Protection from Fire right now. Ho ho ho, it would be so good against this. Not really, right? But to acknowledge that it's better than Protection from Water, we'll put it there. And that's the end of Tier 1 for the Fire School. And we're ready to move to the Earth School. And the first Tier 1 spell we'll be talking about is Shield. Shield has the effect on a single stack of reducing the incoming hand-to-hand -hand damage by, I think, 30%, something like that. Very, very handy. Very useful. If you've got a critical unit that's sort of soaking up damage... In the early game, you can cast Shield, and it has an effect. It might save you a couple of uh, troops uh, by the end of the combat. Similar properties to what we're talking about with the other guys, though. An expert Earth Mage can shield the entire army, and that's actually really, really good and worth doing. You're going to be casting that well into the mid-game. Uh, by the very late game, as an expert Earth Mage, you've got access to some other incredible spells, and it's hard to find time to do Shield because you've got so many other things that are calling um, on you uh, to, to, to be cast. Um, I'm kind of in this ballpark here for shield. Um, a handy spell and, okay, doesn't help you against uh, incoming ranged attacks. Isn't going to be a panacea for everything. But at, at expert earth uh, competency, uh, earth, earth magic competency, a pretty good spell. Uh, what's next here? We've got stone skin. Very similar spell to shield, um, just makes your guys harder to kill, gives in, increases their defense strength. As an expert earth mage, expert stone skin ripples its way across your entire army, but sort of struggles from the same thing that shield does, is that by the time you're doing that, you're going to have better earth spells to cast than this, despite the fact that it's okay. It doesn't have the wow factor of curse or haste uh, in terms of, you know, what happens, you know, what happens when you stone skin your entire army? You, you know, your opponent isn't going to be like, Ooh, not really, right? It's, it's, it's fine, um, but it, it's just okay. Like, it, it's it's not, nothing to write home about. If you see that, see that spell in your Mage Guild in the first week, it's like, nah, yeah. In fact, the more I'm talking, the more I want to just maybe demote it a little bit. It's a little bit worse than Bloodlust. Next cab off the rank is Slow. Okay, so slow, unsurprisingly, is the opposite of haste. In the similar way, these two guys are kind of counter spells for one another. If a unit is hasted and it gets slowed, the haste gets deleted and replaced with slow. Slow has the effect of more or less halving your the the the, the enemy uh, stack uh, in terms of speed. Now, in the early game, it can be pretty handy and pretty useful to slow things. Uh, if you are lucky enough to have some archery units, if you're a Master Gremlins uh, type build at the, at, the, at the beginning, slow is great, right? Hasting your Master Gremlins, not as good. They, they shoot first in the turn, but the bad guys are still coming over to kill the Gremlins at, at their normal speed. Slow is the spell that gives those Master Gremlins the extra two uh, attacks, uh, extra two turns of shooting, which could you know, be critical to, to their survival or to, to you winning the combat with minimum losses. Generally speaking, slow will have far more uh, utility and applications out there on the adventure map fighting against random wandering monsters. When you're up against enemy heroes, uh, if it's not a siege, slow still is probably slightly better than haste most of the time. It does depend on the compositions of the two armies. If you're the guy who uh, wants to rush across and kill things in combat, in melee, haste is probably the better one. Um, if you're a, an archery army, slow is going to be way better than haste. Um, and then, yeah, in, in a siege situation, haste probably does pip, pip slow in that situation. 
I haven't explained, but it should be obvious by now that if you're an expert Earth Mage, you halve the movement of your, the entire army um, when you cast this spell. Now, for that reason, uh, this sees play right the way through, right the way into the mid game. You're going to do it on turn one in the very, very late game, even though you've got access to some incredible Earth spells that we're going to be talking about later. Slow is special. It's a really, really special spell. Like, you're never sad to see it. It's like, oh, good, I've got slow. Nice one. I can lean on that. And if I become an expert Earth Mage, I'm going to be casting it every single combat. Right. Really, really important spell in the game. Slow. There is one more level one Earth spell. It's called View Earth. And it's the exact same thing as View Air, except instead of showing artifacts, it shows unclaimed resources. Similar story. I use it for the same purpose that I use View Air, which is not very much um, most of the time. Uh, even in the random maps I play where it is truly unknown where the stuff lives. <laughs> and so it's a map I have never played before by definition. Still not really using either of these that much. Um, so probably don't need to dwell on that for too long. And we've come to the end of level one. And already we can see a nice smattering. All four schools have something going for them at this early stage. Earth is starting to maybe show its face as a little bit of a favourite. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit at the end maybe uh, about which school I think is my, the favourite. I do have a favourite. Uh, it's not like I'm going to make my decision when I get there to the end, once we've done all the t all of the uh, rankings. Um, but it's nice that we do have a smattering of, of really important utility spells up here. A bunch of kind of just okay things going on here. Uh, interesting adventure spell at level 1 there with Summon Boat as well. Um, so let's move on now to level 2. And we're back to the air school to begin our journey through level two. And the first spell that we have here is a really tricky one to rank and scale. I have to figure out where I'm going to bring the spells in. Um, I'll start them off down sort of in this, in this region while I'm talking about them. Um, disguise. This is a really, really weird one. So the idea is out on the adventure map, you cast Disguise uh, before you end your turn. And it means that enemies that are mousing over or, or looking at your uh, army get a bum steer. They get uh, wrong information about what's in your army. So I think this has uh, quite a big um, application in multiplayer. Well, it would at least have some application in multiplayer. It's not really clear in single player uh, how much of, a, of an effect this has. I've cast it in single player before, but then the AI will do things in its own turn in accordance with its own wishes and you're not really sure if disguising did anything. So this is, I don't really know where to rank this one. Um, it gets cast, but not very often, and it's not exactly pivotal. So I don't think it's a big deal. I'm just going to leave it down in the doldrums, in the D somewhere, and I'm not going to feel too bad about it. I don't want to wax on too much about it. It's not a spell I rely on or care about too much. Uh, disguise at level 2 in the air school. Uh, the next one, there's actually quite a lot of these. There's more spells at level 2 in the air school than there are in any other level of any other school. The second one is Disrupting Ray. Disrupting Ray reduces the defense uh, rating or the defense score of a single stack of enemy monsters, um, which sounds a bit like... Um, uh, Instead of doing that, I could increase the damage I deal when I attack that monster, uh, or I could or I could bloodlust the guy that's attacking it. So you can reduce the defense of the target. It kind of as it does a similar thing. So in a one v one situation, bloodlusting your guy or disrupting Ray his guy, it's going to be about the same, right? So we're already thinking maybe not that good. However, there is this one interesting thing that happens with disrupting Ray, where uniquely, among most, I think it's uniquely. It can be stacked. You can target a single pile uh, of uh, creatures multiple times with this spell and repeatedly pummel its defense uh, rating down. Um, now, at expert level, it doesn't hit every enemy stack. It doesn't hit all seven of the enemy stacks. It's still You still have to pick an enemy for it to hit. And it's just that it hits it harder. Now... What is the value in iteratively continually piling in to reducing something's defense, the defense strength of something 
Well, it's not like you're going to wait five turns before you start attacking it until now it's finally got its defenses down and ready to begin attacking it. You're going to be piling into that creature kind of on the t first turn you cast it, which means that it'll be a smaller threat by the second turn and a small threat again by the third turn. It really only has application when you're up against one particular gross-looking stack of, of, of creatures that you really need to pile into quickly. So its application is actually rather limited. Uh, that being said, I have cast it. I've cast it before, and I've done the multiple stacking thing, and I've, I've, I've have gotten some utility from it, but not really. So at level 2, it's just a kind of a worse bloodlust most of the time, um, and the stacking ability, not that cool. It reminds me of Searing Blow in Slay the Spire, um, for those of you guys who might be familiar with that game, where... You know, you can continue up, up, continually pile onto the card and continually put your resources onto it, and you get, you supposedly get this one massive payoff. Then, um, but reducing someone's defense strength over and over again in an iterative turn-based fight, just it's not going to be that relevant compared to the other things you could be doing instead. Okay, so that's disrupting rate. I mean, I could wax on, and probably I'm waxing too long uh, on some of these, some of these spells. And we do have a lot to get through. Um, Fortune is the next spell, level 2 in the air school. This increases the luck of a, a stack of creatures. And by the uh, late game, by the time you get to the late game, uh, it uh, increases the luck of everybody. Uh, let me just make sure, absolutely sure that's right. Yeah, increases everybody's luck by plus 2. Um, not useless, actually. I like a... I was about to say not very useful. It's not really very useful at all until you're an expert. If you're an expert earth mage and you can increase everybody's luck by plus two and you've got a big army, okay, that's good. So the whole point of being lucky is that when luck triggers, uh, it's basically like being blessed. You deal maximum damage. And if you've got expert luck, luck is actually a secondary skill as well and you can end up dealing double damage when the trigger, go when the trigger sort of procs or when it goes off. Um, yeah, giving everyone plus two luck, it's just okay. I mean, obviously, part of the problem is it doesn't synergize with luck. If, you're, if your hero has luck as a skill, which is an extremely strange thing to say, isn't it? Having luck as a skill. Um, but if your hero has luck as a skill, all of your soldiers are already at two or three, plus two or plus three luck. There's no point casting fortune on them. So there's no build where you go for luck and, for, and fortune, which is kind of a shame. Um... Yeah, it's just okay. It's just an okay spell. Half. It's not going to get cast a lot, right? It's down here in the Ds, probably. It's it's not woefully bad. Oh, it's probably not up here. It's probably more like down here, right? And I might just do a little bit of a rejigging here to line everything up. Uh, just bring that one there and bring that one there. Yeah, Fortune at level 2. It's just okay, right? Uh, you're not particularly excited if you find it in your Mage Guild. The one you've all been waiting for, uh, level 2 air spell, Lightning Bolt. This is an absolute poster child for the air school, this idea of uh, damage dealing. People will tend to use Lightning Bolt to refer to, you know, just damage as a, as a concept, dealing damage to someone, I'm Lightning Bolting them. It's because Lightning Bolt, for the mana that you spend, it's about uh, 8 to uh, spell points, whatever it is, um, deals the most damage per mana spent. It deals much more damage than Magic Arrow, it deals more damage than Ice Bolt that we'll talk about in a second, and on a single stack of monsters it deals more damage, I think, than Fireball uh, and these other... Uh, the, 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 the fire spells of the, lo the lower level um, Fireball anyway. Um, Lightning Bolt, yeah. It's the spell you want. If you're an expert air mage, you really want to get ha your hands on Lightning Bolt so you can just start you know, just destroying the enemy uh, creature stacks with this spell. A lot of the other spells in the game kind of have to be compared to Lightning Bolt because it's ob often the thing you'll be doing instead. So, like, for example, instead of hasting my guy here, instead of slowing his guy, instead of shielding my guy, I could just Lightning Bolt the enemy. There's nothing just like killing them. And that's what this spell does. So, it's A. Is it special? Is it better than these? Mm. It's more exciting than these, yep. Is it special? Not quite. 
but it's an extremely good spell and you're going to be very very excited to grab hold of it in the early game and you'll still cast it quite regularly in the late game um, but it does lose out to the more powerful damage dealing spells in the late game um, but just massive massive utility out of this spell lightning bolt man like who can say no to lightning bolt it's, it's an A grade spell no one watching this who's played the game would would disagree with that would they? let's find out um, next we have precision precision increases the damage dealt by your ranged units and um, all of your allied troops with ranged attacks are, are buffed uh, if you have expert air magic when you do this this can be a thing if you have a, you know, like if you're going for Grand Elves uh, and maybe you've, um, you know, you've got your hand on uh, a good tower town and you've got some mages and Master Gremlins and you've got like this kind of shooting army, Precision's pretty handy. You know, there's lots of artifacts that buff the damage uh, output, like the bowstring of the unicorn. Uh, maybe I can't exactly remember all the artifacts. But how pumped am I? Oh, yes, Precision. Woo! Not really. Right, it's not going to have as much utility as these spells up here. Um, it's not going to see play very often. D plus, D plus for precision for now. Uh, still got two to go at level two of the air school. Protection from air, yeah, protection from air. air lightning bolt's one of the key things you're going to be facing from enemy heroes uh, right the way through the mid game, and protecting your units against that spell. Uh, particularly if you know that the enemy hero has it, isn't nothing. It's okay. You know, it's going to have more utility than protection from fire. Although protection from fire might find its way to being relevant. I think I might just read... I'm going to move fire up a little bit. I think protection from air is slightly better than protection from fire because there's a little bit more... Like, for example, chain lightning is a really important spell we'll be talking about later that protecting your whole team against it's probably going to have a little bit more relevance um, you're still very disappointed with protection from anything in your mage guild it's like, oh, protection from thing oh, you're not really going to be looking forward to casting that um, right, I could just keep waxing on but I know I need to keep moving Visions is an adventure map spell uh, that I find actually to be very useful uh, you cast Visions and I can't remember, I, I do have the wiki here just to help me out, and I hope you guys forgive me for that, um, just to remember what you actually get shown. The idea is you cast visions and then you mouse over an enemy uh, hero or an enemy uh, stack of monsters. Uh, it tells you, you know, the composition of the army, what's in it, and by the time you become an expert, uh, it tells you the enemy town statistics and garrison composition and the quantity... Um, Right, so it tells you everything that's there. I don't exactly know how it in interacts with um, Disguise. Uh, I'm not sure it's ever come up in, in my gameplay. But yeah, Visions has saved me from blundering into a silly fight uh, on more than one occasion. Uh, I'm happy to put it up here somewhere. Uh, I use it. I do use it. It's about as good as these things here. Um, is it that high up as a B? Probably not. It's probably trailing at the tail end of this sort of little train we've got going, um, which I'll just just bump along a little bit. Uh, yeah, I think it's probably at the back end of that, back end of that train. Um, right, that's the end of level two in the School of Air. Now we must turn our focus to level two in the School of Water. And the first spell we're talking about is Ice Bolt. Ice Bolt is the poor man's version of Lightning Bolt. Uh, it's the exact same idea. It's a little bit less mana to cast it, and it does an annoyingly less amount of damage. Like, it's probably about 80% as much damage, and it costs 80% as much spell points. Um, but the, the bang for buck is really in Lightning Bolt. You, you want the extra damage... You, you know, you can only cast one spell per turn. I've got the spell points ready to go. I want to kill the enemy. Which of these two spells I'm going to cast? Have a guess. It's going to be Lightning Bolt every time is the one you're going to, is the one you're going to cast. If you're stuck without Lightning Bolt um, and you only have Ice Bolt, you'll still use it. You'll cast Ice Bolt. 
I think you'll cast it more than Bloodlust. You'll cast it more than Stone Skin. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're looking at maybe heading towards this sort of region again with yet another spell. We're in the sort of B minus E category sort of here. Uh, so I'll find a way to make it a B minus for now. Um, kind of in here. It's a, it's a spell that gets cast. You'll use it in the mid-game. You might rely on it quite heavily, actually, all the way through the mid-game. If you're an expert water mage and you never learnt Lightning Bolt. Ice Bolt's fine. It, it does an okay job. You're okay with it's, it. It's, it's, I mean, what are you worried about? Don't even worry about it. Remove Obstacle. This is a really interesting one. So the idea is that on the battlefield there's going to be various obstacles. You can have you know, skeletons of gigantic creatures. You can have just massive logs or cliffs and things like that that um, stop uh, ground units from passing. Um, removing obstacles, I think, is kind of underrated. It's probably something that I overlook in the sense of, like, okay, what am I going to do on turn one here? I think I probably tend to approach too many fights where I'm like, okay, there's a massive crevasse or a huge log or whatever right in front of my most important speedy guy. How am I going to play around that? And I don't look at remove obstacle or look for remove obstacle fast enough. So the way I play, I probably don't play it enough, and I would tend to put it in the E category because it's a level 2 spell taking up room in my spellbook that I never use. But I think it probably is a little bit underrated. Um, it probably can find its way in... Somewhere to the D minus. Oh, is it as good as... No, hang on. I'll wedge it in here. I'm going to pop it in here. Um, I think it can sometimes situationally be quite a handy thing to have, to, the, the ability to remove an obstacle uh, just a at a critical moment to give something potent that you've got uh, access. Uh, it's obviously a very, it's kind of a very offensive spell in that way. If you've got a defensive shooting army with dwarves and elves or whatever, you'd like to have a spell that creates obstacles, right? So you can think of this as, it's kind of like haste. It's, it's, a, it's a sort of like a poor man's haste. It's a way of getting to the enemy quickly. Uh, remove obstacle. In the water school, just checking my levels, checking everything's cool. All right. Uh, now, we're still in the water school at level two, and we have scuttleboat. Uh, cool idea, the idea that you can summon a boat and then uh, having summoned it into existence you've got this kind of divine godlike power to create and to destroy. Um, I have scuttled boats in the past, um, so it's not an E, but it's nowhere near as good as summon boat. Like nowhere near as good, it's nowhere near as much utility as summon boat. So where are we? I'm probably scuttling boats down here in the D, in the D zone, and I'm starting to get nervous and worried about these, the, the getting the order of these right, which I'm probably being too perfectionist and too pernickety. It's clearly worse than summon boat, but it still has some applications. It might be more. It might need to be more sort of down here. But all these spells are kind of in this. Don't really use them very often. Every now and then they're kind of okay. Shrug. So you could equally pick all seven of these up and randomly change the order of them, and I would agree with it. Um, maybe just by telling you guys how I feel, that's good enough, rather than having to always show it necessarily graphically. A lot of pressure on me with this, you know? Like, I, yeah, I, with, with the Creatures video, I got tons of comments. Like, the Creatures video has actually become, in a couple of months, my most viewed video in the whole history of the channel, and it stirred up so much controversy, which is exactly what I was setting out to do, by the way. Um, so as I'm talking, I'm like, oh, hang on, am I, am, am I sure I'm, am I sure I'm actually covering the bases as I go here with this? But um, engaging with you guys in the comments is the thing that makes this fun. It's the thing that makes it worthwhile for me. So um, anyway, uh, hopefully I'm explaining things well enough in terms of my opinion as we go. The next one is weakness. Um, weakness is a spell that reduces the attack strength of uh, or of, of an enemy uh, unit. I'm, as you can tell, I'm doing a terrible job of pretending like I'm not just double-checking the wiki to make sure that I get it right. Your attack rating is reduced by 3, by 6 if you're advanced, and that's for a single stack. And then if you're an expert, you can reduce everyone's attack strength by 6. All Every enemy stack has their attack strength reduced by 6. Sounds fantastic. 
Um, the thing is that late in the game when you're an expert water mage, the stuff you're up against is going to have attack of like, you know, 20 and 24 and crazy numbers like this. And reducing it by 6 is good, but you know what's really good? Is just cursing everyone. If that's what you want to do, is just make your opponent's creatures more toothless than they were, well, you know, you can just curse them all. I mean, another way to do that is to shield all your guys and give them 30%, um, give, give, give the damage coming in a 30% haircut that way. So weakness is fine. Like, it's okay. But it's level 2, whereas it's up against shield and curse, which kind of... and stone skin, which are level 1. Uh, and for that reason, weakness is just... Uh, okay. Have I ever cast it before? Yes. Have I cast it more than precision? Absolutely. Um, and you see it show up all the time when dragonflies attack. And that might be why I might be overrating it. It might actually belong more down here. Um, just because it's like, oh yeah, weakness gets cast all the time, every time I play the game. But it's being cast by the dragonflies. Uh, so that's it's not really fair to include that. Yeah, or, or for, for the purposes of this, this, the, this test is about whether or not the hero wants to cast the spell, right? So it's just because it shows up in the game, it doesn't isn't going to promote it up the uh, order of this list in particular. Okay, <clears throat> probably over explaining, but I um, think that's it for water. We've finished talking about water at level two, and we're going to move on to fire. Now there are only two spells. One of them is incredible, and one of them is not. So let's do the best one first. Blind is... I actually have, I think on one, in one of my streams of my YouTube uh, postings of myself playing the game, I talk about blind, the, the spells in the game being divided into, into those spells that are blind and those that aren't. Bl blind is absurd. It is just so good. So where do we begin? What the effect is, pick a single enemy stack... And once blinded, that enemy cannot move or attack. It's out of the fight completely until it is attacked by you or your ballista by accident um, or until the spell wears off or until the enemy hero cures or dispels and cure and dispel is an answer to blind. Okay, but here's the thing. You're going to blind the meanest monster on their team, the meanest, the meanest stack of creatures out of the game. Big pile of arch devils, blind. Right? Archangels, blind. <laughs> See ya. You're just parked. You park that unit and you get to fight the rest of the army. By the way, if the rest of the army's still too big, just blind someone else on your next turn. And then you, you really can. It's like cutting the cutting your lunch up into four into into se bite-sized segments. And you just fight a subset of the enemy until you're done. So against wandering monsters that don't have cur don't have dispel and don't have cure to save them, against a, a big basket of wandering monsters, blind is just the best spell. It is the best spell to cast. Re and this is the thing. It's almost regardless of who you are. This is the other amazing thing about blind. All of the other spells we've talked about really get switched on when you're an expert in that school of magic. So slow, not actually that good until you're an expert earth mage. Bless, haste, you want to be expert water, expert air mage. With blind, blind can be used by mages that have never studied fire magic with equal proficiency and effect as someone who is an expert fire mage. In fact, even the stupidest hero, hero of might, let's say, who's barely bought himself a spell book, has no wisdom. It's a level two spell, right? You don't need wisdom. Pfft, can cast this. If you've got... It, it does cost ten spell points, right? But if you've got the ten spell points... <laughs> Goodbye, Dolly. Yeah, you need a bit of spell power in order to get the duration. Okay, you, you, you need the unit to not just be blinded for one turn. You need it to last. Um, so you need spell power three or four. Any, any, that's what I'm saying. Any hero with spell power three or four can make massive use of blind. So, does it get cast? Yes, it gets cast so much. All through the early game, all through the mid game. Big hunks of the late game, situational situ like, occasions where you'll be blinding still in the late game. Anyone can cast it, right? Anyone can use it. 
And it actually is a one of the weaknesses of the fire school is that it's its very best spell. Okay, spoiler alert. I think it's the best fire spell. Um, is kind of it's a it's a citizen of all the schools. It's a citizen. It's it's something for everyone. Kind of weakens fire as a prospect. Which school of magic will I become an expert in? Well, I'll all, I, well we've all got blind, so I don't need to be an expert fire mage. I may as well pick air. You know, whatever. Uh, but that's a bit of a sidecar, just talking about the weakness of the fire school. Um, yeah, this spell is beyond special, right? It's 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 awesome. I think I like it, and I'm more excited by it than I am by slow. Having said that, I want slow uh, by the late game. Okay, so it's more likely that I'm going to cast slow in the late game than I'm going to cast blind. But in the first two to three to four weeks, what are the spells I'm looking to show up in my Mage Guild? I want both. Uh, but, oh, blind. Blind's going to be hard to beat. There are some incredible spells we'll talk about, though, coming up. So it's not it's not top of the pops. I haven't made my decision. I like to save my decision on who's the most specialist until the end. That worked really well last time with the creatures uh, video. But I like it better than slow. Um, oh, it's just so good. There's nothing like blind. Oh, great spell. Have I sold you? Maybe not. Maybe I have, maybe I haven't. I hope I'm coming through nice and crystal clear here. Right, how are my levels? I hope I'm not... My, 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 my audio's okay. Um, there is another fire spell at level 2 in the School of Fire. It's called Firewall. And what this does is it puts up, literally, a wall of fire. Uh, now, any enemy passing through the firewall takes damage. Great. Well, you know, let's say that you put the firewall up in front of, I don't know, some gogs or uh, some elves or some marksmen or something like that to really discourage the enemy from attacking it. Well, here's the thing. The enemy just gets to make whichever decision is best for them. So what I mean by that is uh, if what's hiding behind the firewall is absolutely deadly and has to be, has to be destroyed at all costs... The enemy can just walk through the firewall and take the damage. It doesn't deal... Like, it does deal decent damage to them as they walk through it, but... And if the thing that you're hiding behind the wall isn't that big a deal, well, I'll just not... I'll, I'll not walk through it then, and I'll just avoid it. So this thing's competing against... Uh, there's another spell we'll talk about later in the Earth School called Force Field. Force Field actually puts up a barrier that is impassable. You cannot go through it. You can't land on this, those hexes. Land units cannot walk through them. Far more... Uh, uh, definitive, a far more definitive way of putting something on the battlefield. And this is kind of like the create obstacle, right? We talked about before, you've got remove obstacle, this is the create obstacle, this defensive spell. But it's not... You're, you're handing the initiative to your opponent and saying, what do you want to do? You know. Now, against the AI, you can probably put firewalls in silly spots and the AI will be too stupid to um, navigate them. I don't know if that's right or not, but this spell is not good. And I, it, I'm looking at these ones here, and I cast these. I've cast these before. This guy, very, very rarely looking to firewall something, and almost every time I think I've ever cast it, it didn't really do what I wanted. It, it didn't actually affect the, the, the battle the way I thought it was going to. Okay. All right, that's level two in the fire school. Moving on to the earth school at level two, we have Death Ripple, and earth magic has this whole connection to the Necropolis heroes um, and to the Necropolis town. Um, and this is a spell very much for heroes that have an army full of undead uh, soldiers from the Necropolis town specifically. Death Ripple does exactly what it says. Anything that isn't undead takes damage. Um, here's the thing, though. It's not a lot of damage. In the early game, I don't need to be doing massive AoE. I'd love to do massive AoE. I don't need to be doing light AoE damage early in the game. Right, early in the game I'm up against wandering monsters in clumps of two or three, and if I want to deal damage to them, the best way to do that is probably going to be Lightning Bolt. Pick a stack and kill it, as opposed to death rippling all three stacks. The total amount of damage dealt is lower uh, than you get out of the Lightning Bolt. Um, and you can use your superior ability as a human being to kind of govern the, the, the battle by just just destroy one of the creatures or, 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 or massively hamper them with lightning bolt, it's just going to be better than death rippling. Um, it's obviously also extremely situational. It only works when you've got undead, kind of strictly undead, right? Like, let's say 
you've got five soldiers in your army, and for some weird reason, you've also got a a non um, uh, undead uh, troop stack. Well, the death ripple is going to hurt that 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 non undead stack. Uh, I'm just going to check here to make sure I understand what gets hurt by it. Right? It's yeah, it's non undead units. So if you've got some gargoyles, yeah, other stuff like that. Um, golems or something that don't care about morale in your army, they're going to take damage from Death Ripple. There's, there's going to be something else you're going to do instead. Yeah, I just think in the late game, I don't... I'm not going to cast... Like, when I, when I am Necro, I don't tend to cast it. Um, that said, I do cast it. Uh, you know, it has been cast. So I'm putting it at the back end of this quickly growing concertina of spells that are just kind of okay. Once in a while, might be relevant, sort of can be useful. But you're not particularly enamored of it, right? Um, final spell uh, at level two in in the Earth School is Quicksand. Quicksand uh, is a little bit in the same category as Firewall. I think it's better than Firewall because um, it puts random bits of Quicksand over the over the field, right? Which, if you're playing a defensive tactic or a defensive strategy, is fine. It goes up to eight different random uh, tiles, but it's really only useful out in the open world, in the open world adventure map. Um, you know, when you're fighting a siege, if you're defending the siege, putting quicksand around the place isn't really going to help much. And if you're attacking, it's obviously an absurd thing to do um, because it's just going to restrict your ability to move around behind the castle walls once you've breached the walls. Uh, so very situational, right? You'd almost want to be able to... Well, I guess you could combine this with force fields and firewalls and have a kind of a strategy that way. Um, but, yeah, like, quicksand, not really good enough. Um, it's prob I'm going to put it down here next to Firewall. I'd like to put it in D+, but we're running out of room, and I'm going to force myself into making some tough choices, because uh, I don't just want to double up and have the graphics just piled into D-. But there's a lot of spells in this category, I think, is what we're discovering, as I'm discovering as I'm talking about them as we're going through um, as well. All right, we are finished level two. We're ready to move on to level three. We're going to cycle back up to the air school, and we're talking about air shield. Now, air shield is a spell that protects your guys against incoming uh, missile ranged attacks. Uh, for more information on what this is, it's 25% less damage at first, rising to 50%. Uh, and then by the time you're an expert air mage, and this is where it kind of comes into its own, it reduces incoming damage from all ranged units to all of your allied stacks by 50%. So this is kind of shield, except for ranged, and instead of giving 30%, it gives 50%. So, is it good? Oh, I don't use it very often, but it can be situationally quite useful in the late game. Um, I think it might be in this vicinity here, but it's worse than Stone Skin because Stone Skin does do something in the early game and you can expertly use it in the late game. Air Shield really is nothing. Air Shield is useless until you're an expert air mage, okay? And I'm demoting it for this reason, right? You, you need to be an expert air mage to use it. The reason is that most armies, very few armies, have one massive stack of troops, again, unless you're in the late game. If you've got an army with four or five different troop stacks, well, being able to shield one of them against air, against ranged units, ranged attacks is pointless. Shielding one of your guys, that's a thing, because you can see which of your four stacks is at risk. Which of, which of, which of my boys are, are going to get smacked up here? I'll shield him. You can't dictate who the enemy shoots, right? So if you're only a basic or advanced level, you've got to pick one of your stacks to shield against ranged attacks, but that just means the archer picks somebody else. And the AI is smart enough to do that. The AI in this game is excellent. It's one of the other reasons why it's just an incredible game. Like, oh. I mean, AI in any of these games, you know, with tactical combat, is a challenge to, to program. And okay, yes, it misbehaves sometimes, does some, some things you're kind of going, hmm. But overall, man, I cannot speak highly enough of the, the AI. I can't speak highly enough of this game in general. It's just such an amazing game. Um, Air Shield... It's, it's got that thing I said... You need to be an expert air mage to leverage it, and then you need your en enemy to have lots of shooting. So it's... Have I played it before? Yes. Do I care if I never discover it, if I never learn it? No. Okay. Uh, that's how that works. 
Now, air magic has this other spell, which is very interesting, called Destroy Undead. Again, very situational. Uh, you do a bunch of damage to uh, every undead uh, pile uh, of troops, uh, friend or foe. Okay, so it's the opposite of Death Ripple. It's the complete opposite of that. It's not like a status effect or anything where they counter each other, but it's, it's the reverse side of that coin. This is a handy spell to have in your backpack. Um, you're not going to cast it very often. Okay. Will you cast it more often than Precision? Probably. So let's give it some kind of some kind of life. Um, with my uh, tiles that I'm pasting in here, I couldn't get every tile to be the exact same size. And as a result, there's a, it's a little bit of higgledy-piggledy-higgledy-piggledy-ness higgledy going on which I can't actually do much about um, with the tools that I'm using here. Hope you'll, hopefully you'll forgive me for that. Uh, okay, so not too much more to be said about Destroy Undead. I think it, it feels like it, it hits the undead fairly hard when you cast it, um, if you've got a good application for it, but it's a fairly niche scenario that you, you're going to find yourself um, casting it, um, and you're certainly not going to be sort of pining for it. Uh, now, there is a powerful... Final spell at level 3 to talk about in the Air Magic School, Hypnotize. Uh, this promises so much. Oh man, Hypnotize. You mean not only instead of blinding them... Whoa, 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 wait a minute. See that stack of Archdevils? Instead of blinding them, what if I hypnotize them? Ho, 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 ho. Not only are they out of, the, uh, out of my hair, he's on my team. I'm going to completely transform the entire combat. Like, I'm going to turn your best guy against you. This spell is busted. Is it? Is it, though? I have played... There's a hero in the wizard town, in the, in the tower town, called Astral, who specialises in hip, hypnosis. I don't, uh, hypnotize. Hypnotize, I think. Yeah, hypnotize is the name of the spell. Okay. His specialty is this spell, and he casts it with increased effect or whatever. And I've leveled him up. I've gotten him to, you know, ridiculous uh, amounts of knowledge and spell power. And he still isn't able to hypnotize anything worth hypnotizing. In the vanilla game, I don't know maybe if the uh, community tweaks have, have changed the way this works, but in the vanilla game, you just can't build up enough spell power to hypnotize something worthwhile. So, Hypnotize promises a lot, but it requires someone who is exceptionally powerful at spellcasting to cast it on an enemy. So you can hypnotize, like, a stack of four familiars, and that will work fine, but it's pointless, right? And it becomes just a kind of a poor man's blind. Uh, it only works on small creatures that you don't care about anyway. If you are the greatest spellcaster that wizardry has ever known, then yes, it's it's going to be a very special spell for you. Well done. I would also point out that it doesn't work on a bunch of creatures, right? It doesn't work on undead, and you can't cast it on anything that's not alive. That said, blind doesn't work on undead either, uh, as I found out uh, in my last uh, run-through, or as I, I was reminded in my last run-through. So, hypnotize. No. No, it's just not going to... It's just not, it, It's not a good... It's not an exciting spell to, to come across. Um, can it squeak into the sea? I'm going to be mean to it, actually. I'm going to say it's a D. Now, I'm sure some of you guys are like, oh, nah, man, hypnotize. I used it on my last run-through. I did this, that, and the other. It was amazing for me. Maybe they, maybe that's so. So let me know um, if, if maybe I'm being too, too unfair on it. Um, it's just the, the, the accessibility. Like, unless you're an expert heir and you've really got tons of spell power, you can't leverage it. Right, Fireball. Uh, we're over to the Fire School, level 3. I want Fireball to be the poster boy of damage dealing in the game, right? I, it's, it feels like, from a design perspective, Fireball, oh, I just wish it was more scary. It affects 7 hexes instead of 1 hex, like the Lightning Bolt, but it just doesn't do enough damage. It doesn't do enough damage. There aren't seven con seven stacks of creatures conveniently s clustered together for me to hit, which, like, Frostring and stuff suffers from this as well. Um, which Frostring's level three. Wow, okay, so we haven't talked about that one yet. Um, 
Fireball, yeah, like it's just okay. Like, but normally you're struggling to get two targets. Like, if you've got two targets, it can be nearly as good as Lightning Bolt. Right? It's level three, Lightning Bolt's level two. I don't end up casting it very often. If I'm an expert Fire Mage, I'll probably do Expert Curse and then start Lightning Bolting things instead of Fireballing things. Look, so for that reason, it's it's a C-ish spell. Like, it's not very good. It's it's just not very good. I'm sorry, guys. Like, Fireball, I, it, it, you, you would think, oh, what's, what's, what do you expect the school of fire magic in a given game to contain? Fireball! Ooh, that's surely a very, very damaging spell and a key component of a fire mage's spellbook. Uh, but there are no games where I'm like, oh, man, I can't believe I haven't discovered Fireball yet. You know, I feel like the worst fire mage that's ever lived. Uh, the most unlucky fire mage. I can't believe I haven't found Fireball yet. It's not really the case. Um, and it just comes down to stats. How much damage, raw damage, does it deal? This thing's just better. Um, right, let's keep going. We can make landmines. Uh, so landmine is kind of similar to quicksands, a similar idea, similar, it's probably more similar to like firewall. Um, if you walk over the landmine, you take very high damage. It, like, it, to be fair, the landmine does hurt, like, like the proverbial when you step over it. Probably has a little bit more utility than these two. I want to <laughs> try to find somewhere for it in here. Running out of room at D tier. Uh, and I think it, the time has come to bite the bullet. We are going to need to overlay a little bit here because you've, we're just going to have a, a wide belly thing going on here in the D tier. Landmine, it's kind of like in this region, right? Remove obstacle. It's something that you can cast. It can have a, it can have a relevant effect on the battle. Um, but you're not going to cast it very often. So I'm going to do a quick tidy up here and um, uh, we'll, start, we'll start overlaying and overloading the D-minus uh, section. Um, now, what's next? We have Misfortune. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. This is unfortunate. It's kind of the opposite of Fortune, right? Like it's, The idea is that you reduce everybody's luck by two. Here's the problem. Luck is non-negative. You can't be unlucky um, in combat. When you go to swing your weapon or something, you can't... There's no such thing as a trigger is... Oh, he has, oh, they swung with bad luck this time. Swing and a miss. You can only have zero luck or neutral luck uh, up to being super, super du duper lucky. So you need... This thing does the same thing, right? You can pick an enemy unit and make it unlucky reduce its luck. If you're an expert fire mage, you reduce everybody's luck. But here's the here's the rub. They need to be lucky in the first place. Fortune is something that you can take a very new someone who has no luck at all, or an army that has no luck at all, and you can make them lucky. But misfortune relies on the enemy already being lucky so that it can be nerfed. If the enemy is already at zero luck, <laughs> like misfortune doesn't do anything. And like, you know, at basic and advanced, picking a single enemy to reduce his luck? Come on. You know, so this thing, okay, it's tier three. So in terms of punishment for being bad, being level one and useless is worse than being level three and useless, in my opinion. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. How to find your way into the F tier, a surefire way of finding your way there is to be level one and useless. Or right, this might be level two, I can't remember. Protection from uh, water. But this spell is kind of, oh, so ridiculously corner case that you're almost never going to cast it in a million years. You're just not casting it. I, I can't, I, I don't know if we'll come across a spell that's just less useful and has fewer applications than Misfortune, um, apart from this one. Uh, so I'm putting it down in the F. Like, it's really, really bad. You don't want Misfortune in your Mage Guild if you can uh, help it, which you can't. <laughs> you, all you can do is build the thing, cross your fingers, open the Mage Guild window and see what you've got. And if it's got Misfortune, then, well, the irony is self-evident for everyone. Uh, okay. That was level 3 in Fire. Level 3 in Earth. And uh, Earth starts to go a bit bonkers here. <laughs> Um, spoiler alert, Earth is the best school, um, and it's not even close. Uh, Animate Dead is the first um, 
spell though at level three in Earth. And what this does is if you've got a stack of um, undead troops that have taken damage, you can animate dead uh, on, their, on their undead butts and they'll come back to life. Uh, you'll get a restoration of HP uh, on that stack of, 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 of troops. Okay. And the power level, uh, or the number of troops you get back, is a function of um, how uh, much spell power you have and whether you're an expert or uh, advanced or basic um, earth mage. And this is a really, really important and useful spell, um, assuming that you have an undead army or that you at least have an undead stack um, that needs um, reanimating. Uh, it has, a, it's a very close cousin of a spell we'll talk about in, uh, well, probably not for a while, because uh, it's the next tier up, which is called Resurrect, uh, which is a way of bringing living creatures, uh, re restoring their HP. Um, but in the classical sense, this and Resurrect both are your classic heal, right? All games, a lot of games, well, most fantasy-style games have this concept that hurt, damaged units can be healed. And heal generally tends in a lot of games to be very, very powerful. And indeed, it is powerful. It is powerful in this game too. I don't know how. I wish we'd kind of done resurrect first because it's easy to. It's easy to. It's going to be a spoiler alert. It's, it's definitely way up here. In fact, it's probably in the special. But we'll get to that. Animate dead. It, it's yeah. It's it's special for your undead soldiers. So where do I want to put it on the ratings chart? I don't know. why I said ratings that way. Ah, uh, it's because I can't decide. Um, excitement factor. I'm more excited by haste in my mage guild than animate dead. But if I'm a necropolis focused person, I'm really going to want this. It's like when you're casting it, it's it's for a reason, and you're delighted that you've got it. <laughs> you know, animate dead. But because it's situational, I'm just going to put it here. I don't really know if. That's right, but I'm kind of making the rules up of what dictates goodness as I go. Um, so I'm just going to say, you know what, I'm, not, I'm just not going to get too upset about it. This is a spell, this next one, anti-magic, that I actually don't mind admitting. I always forget what the heck this does, which tells you something about how often I cast it, right? Allied troops are immune uh, to, level, to spells uh, from level 1 to 3 at basic. At the advanced level, uh, it's level 1 to 4. Um, in other words, level 5 spells still hurt them. And at Expert, if you're an Expert Earth Mage, it's still a single stack of troops. You pick one stack of troops and you make them immune to all spells in the game. Um, now, the, uh, the Magic Elementals and Black Dragons that we talked about in the last video already have this property. They've already had Expert Anti-Magic cast on them. That's how you can think of it. Um, this could have uh, some niche applications where you have a late game uh, build uh, composition made up of only one stack of monsters. Um, you've got one big stack of, let's say, I don't know, um, phoenixes or archangels. You get the first turn, you cast expert anti-magic on them, and all of a sudden you've got a bunch of black dragons that are even better than black dragons. Sure. Okay. Fine. But most of the time you're going to have four or five different stacks, maybe seven stacks of units in your um, uh, creatures in your army, and casting, making one of them completely immune to magic means that the spellcaster on the other side of the field just picks one of your other guys. So it's two corner case. It doesn't get you it doesn't get used enough. For me, it probably gets used more, I imagine, out there than some of these other things... I think we're back down in this region, aren't we? We are. We are. And I'm going to have to do that uh, little tweak again. So we'll do that. Okay, so anti-magic. Uh, again, in that kind of sometimes maybe category. Uh, a few more here at level 3. In the Earth School, we've got Earthquake. Uh, this is a spell that damages castle walls. Uh, it's literally only going to be cast when you are attacking in a siege... And, yeah, you could damage the castle walls, or you could just uh, kill their guys. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, whatever. Or you could haste your guys over the wall, you know, your flyers over the walls. Um, there might be a certain example of times where you've got a particular army composition that's very ground-based, and you're not shooting through the walls, um, 
and really you don't have a lot of other choices. You've got to get in there and you're in a hurry. You don't have time, you don't have enough spell points to kill them with lightning bolts. You need to get your melee troops through those gates. Earthquake can help, sure. But very situational and you know, it's gonna usually be better to do to do something else, right? Get you guys over there some other way. Or use a different hero, use a hero that has ballistics. Uh, you only need to breach the wall in one place, really, in most fights. Um, so damaging four, and it goes up to six or whatever, different sections of wall. Uh, it'd be better if it would be better if you could use the earthquake to utterly annihilate one section of wall. You know, maybe even if it's still randomly chosen, but because it spreads its damage around different parts of the walls, which is very realistic, of course. Um, the realism comes at the cost of the spell not having a great deal of utility. I am going to cast it more often than these two, you know, um, so we'll, we'll let it sneak into C- minus for the Earthquake. Now, hope you guys are still with me. We're on to Force Field. Now, we talked about this a little bit earlier. We compared, when we were comparing and talking about Firewall. Force Field has a little bit more utility. It's going to see play a little bit more often. I think I might promote the views. I'm looking at these, all these spells that don't get cast very much. I think I'm, a, I'm okay with the views actually making their way up to D+, so that we can make a bit more room here for spells like this. Is it as good as Scuttleboat? Yeah. Uh, it's okay, right? I, I think I've cast it before. I think I've used it. Um, it can be a nuisance, but I don't care if I never learn it or if, it, if it's not a thing. Okay, the final protection spell, protection from Earth. Right. Earth has a couple of spells we're going to be talking about coming up that deal massive damage. Uh, one of them is an AoE effect, okay? And the other is the most powerful damage dealing spell of the entire game. So I think protection from Earth is probably the best one. Even though, okay, it's level three. But you're not going to use it, you're not going to need it until you're up against things that are level 5, so its level doesn't really matter. Um, with that said, because it's level 3, it's not chewing up slots at level 1 and 2 that the others are, which makes it better for that reason as well, anyway. So this spell has a lot more, um, a lot more going for it than the other three. Uh, it's not better than this other stuff I've just been talking about, but it might, you might cast it to protect every uh, soldier in your army to give them a 50% reduction against the two spells that we'll be talking about coming up. Um, so, not in the junkyard, but like, yeah, it, maybe it's even too high up here. Maybe it should swap with Death Ripple or something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that swap, okay? Against a specific, specific enemy heroes in the late game that are doing expert earth damage, it probably does have an application. You know, it, 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 situational, but, 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 but there can be some value there. That's the end of level three. Now that means we're probably about halfway, maybe a little bit past halfway. Um, so if you're still with me, thank you. Let's kick on now back to level four, up to level four, and it's back to the School of Air. And the very first spell... Very famous and well-celebrated spell, popular spell in the game, uh, by anyone's measure, is Chain Lightning. Imagine, if you will, a lightning bolt, which is already up there very good, that then ricochets off the first target and deals additional damage to uh, a secondary target, and then a third, and then a fourth. On top of that, it deals far more damage, pound for pound. So uh, an air mage casting lightning bolt on a single target Compare that to that same mage casting chain lightning on that target with the ricochets, the chain lightning deals way more damage. Um, now, direct damage is, like in a lot of games and like healing, just great, right? You want to deal massive damage. Like, there's a problematic unit over there, a spongy soft archery unit that's got high DPS and, la and bad uh, defense. Chain lightning is the answer to your prayers, right? It's a great spell. It's really, really good. If you've got the first turn, you can cast this up and down and it'll ricochet down the enemy's lines before the fight has even started and you've dealt, you've dealt a huge blow right off the bat. Now you've foregone the opportunity to slow the whole army or curse the whole army or bless all of your army or haste all of your army, but that will often be worth it just by the sheer amount of damage Chain Lightning does. 
Um, so, yeah, this spell is an A. Uh, how am I going to compare it to Lightning Bolt? Okay, how shall I compare thee? Level 4, harder to access. Lightning Bolt's much more useful to heroes that don't know air magic or aren't very powerful. For an expert air mage, it's obvious which one's better, right? It's really obvious which one's better. Uh, so which one has the bigger wow factor and excitement factor? Given that it's level 4, you're going to have to go around your towns building level 4 mage guilds. You might not get it straight away. You've got an air mage, and then when you do get it, you're like really happy. Um, so it's better than Lightning Bolt for that reason. Um, and again, looking at this from the outside, you might think, how can these two, how can I be so idiotic to compare these as similar power levels? It's not about power levels, right? It's about excitement factor, utility. How much value does this spell, how much, how often does it get cast in a campaign? Lightning Bolt gets cast way more often than this does. Um, it's everything to everyone, this, this thing. This is my point about blind. Blind is, is, is so awesome and important on this Richter scale of measurement because of its utility to everybody in the game. Chain Lightning, yeah, like an idiot who's never studied air magic can't leverage this... That's not even true. They can. It's still good, right? But it's going to chew up all their spell points. They're going to get cast at once. One big blaze of glory... You know, there's going to be times where the ricochets come over and hit your own guys. That's a thing, by the way, a downside of Chain Lightning... Um, so anyway, they're two different spells for two different purposes, and, 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 and they, they lead different lives, but they're both A-grade spells uh, for, for, for those different reasons that I've outlined there, in my view. Counter-Strike is a level 4 spell, probably would have more, uh, or be more impressive at a lower level, um, and I don't cast it very often, but the idea is that you get to retaliate more than once, okay? All allied troops can retaliate uh, three times in total at expert level. So this one's kind of a weird one. It depends on your composition. If your composition is made up of, you know, a really combined arms where you've got marksmen and zealots, as an example, and then a bunch of other uh, castle troops doing melee, Counter-Strike doesn't seem that great to me because... You know, the spongy stuff, if people are attacking your zealots, for example, having them fight back three times, I get, it, it depends. If you've got a balanced force that's a lot doing a lot of melee, uh, and especially if you're doing, say, say, if we stay in the castle town, imagine we're flying over the walls with griffins. Uh, we've got a big army of you know, griffins of you know, different piles. Maybe we've got some angels as well. Uh, you can picture casting expert Counter-Strike. They all arrive on the... <laughs> Royal Griffins are a really bad example, I just realised, because they have infinite retaliations anyway. Oh, uh, look. Yeah, does it have some application? Yes. Expert, Counter-Strike. I could see myself casting it. I just don't remember a time where I ever have lent on it very heavily. Um, is it going to be better than Precision? Probably not. Probably not, right? It's, it's, it's okay. But I think it's expensive for what it does... Uh, what's the point of retaliating three times if your guys are already dead? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I think this spell could be more busted and breakable if there was a mechanic in the game that... Say there were certain units in the game that really worked well in defence. So Royal Griffins are like, oh, I work really well in defence, I retaliate multiple times. It's like, well, if you had a way of making it so that your units did double damage in retaliations, or something like that, where... When you get attacked, bad things happen to the enemy. Uh, there's nothing really like that in the game. It's almost always when your unit does something to the enemy, like it does you know, a petrifying attack or a paralyzing attack or an aging attack. When I attack, this thing happens to the enemy, not when I get attacked, bad things happen to the enemy. So, you know, the Bor Boros Reckoner um, effects, for those of you who uh, understand Magic the Gathering, and I'm sure many of you do. Um... Yeah, so Counter-Strike, not that great, really. Um, so he's down here. Okay. Okay, yeah, so I realised that I've actually made a boo-boo, and I skipped level 3. <laughs> it is level 3. I skipped level 3 of the um, School of Water, and I went straight on to level 3 of School of Fire, and then I finished off level 3 of Earth... 
went back up and did level four of air, and now I'm coming down to do level four of water, and I haven't done level three of water. So I thought about undoing and redoing the video for linearity and uh, posterity sake, but I can't be bothered. I'm going to wedge level three of the water school in here, and then I'm gonna actually move straight on to talk about level four of the water school. So get ready for a day at the water park for the next 10 or 15 minutes. I don't know how long it might take me uh, to, to get through, but um, let's spend some time in the water school, shall we? Now, forgetfulness. Hilarious thing happened in my last playthrough, uh, again, link in the description, um, where I discovered forgetfulness early on. I got taught it, and I was really disappointed. It's like, oh, forgetfulness. <gasps> and then I went on to get given a whole pile of Grand Elves for free uh, out of Pandora's boxes and stuff. And um, I built this really sort of defensive kind of army. And I also came across a couple of really, really nice looking um, artifacts and prizes behind that were guarded by this big pile of marksmen. Uh, and then another separate one of, uh, I can't remember what the enemy was, but they were strictly just one massive pile of ranged units. And forgetfulness um, turned out to be great. Turned out to be really, really good. So I was going to well, happily put this in the E before I played that campaign. The idea is, as an expert water mage, when you cast this, every single ranged uh, unit on the other side of the battlefield just doesn't do anything. Now, I don't know if... Yeah, I'm trying to remember how it works. So they do... They, they will walk up to you and attack you in melee, and that's what happened with the marksmen. I was up against, like, you know, 150 marksmen with my small army. Would have destroyed my army. Would have utterly obliterated me. Cast forgetfulness. I had the speed advantage. Cast forgetfulness on turn one, and they all started walking towards me. And I just got to go and slaughter them. Like, obviously, in melee combat, they stink. They're not very good. Um, I think I had archery of my own as well, and I was just able to completely pummel them into the ground as a result uh, of forgetfulness. Um, I'm also really drawn to the flavour of forgetfulness. Like, I just love this idea that after the battle, it's like, you know, Bob, you had one job to do what do you what do you like and, and he's like bob's like well i'm sorry i just just forgot <laughs> I, I mean what do you mean you forgot how, do you, how can you just forget it's just so funny like you look at him look at the artworks like oh crap i was meant to shoot my my crossbow um so i'm giving this a good score i know it doesn't deserve it right I, because it's too situational um, but it, the hilarity of it um, gives it the, like gives it this right. It's probably in the most clinical competitive sense. It's probably a spell that belongs in this region down here at best. But I have to give it a buff. I have to give it a, a bump and a bit of a shout out because um, it was so fun. <laughs> it was just really fun casting. I, 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 it was it was it was a good time. Forgetfulness. All right. Um, Frostring. Frostring is like Fireball, um, even though I should have talked about it before Fireball uh, in the strict order of events that I was doing things. Frostring is Fireball, but with a hole in the middle. So there can be a unit standing in the middle of the Frostring that takes no damage. It, I find, is better than Fireball. It does tends to just do more damage when I'm using it. I can't be bothered looking up to see which one does more damage, but it feel, they feel comparable anyway. I mean, there's not a huge different, difference between them. Um... I do probably cast Frostring a bit more often than I cast Fireball. Um, so we'll do that. I'm going to... Yeah, quick edit here. I'm just going to just do some slight rejigging. Uh, Frostring. Yeah, it's it, it can actually be quite good. It can be quite good, and you might do it instead of Ice Bolt if the enemy has configured themselves. If you can, get, if you can hit three guys with Frostring, it's way better generally than, than um, Ice Bolt's going to be um, as a Water Mage. Okay. All right, uh, now we're not done. There's tons of the, <laughs> there's tons of these level three water spells. Um, okay, this is an interesting one. Mirth, mirth increases the morale. Okay, so it will if you cast it on a single target as a basic or an advanced mage, it'll increase the morale of that of that uh, stack. And then as an expert water mage, it'll increase the morale of your whole army. Um, how much does it increase it by, you ask? The answer is two. Uh, it increases the happiness of the army by two. 
and yeah, um, this is kind of okay. Like it, it can be good. You need to have, you need to be the expert water mage, and you need, you know, to have troops that care about morale who aren't already moraled. So, yeah, like it, it it's fairly situational. Um, how much more damage are your dudes going to deal as a result of having plus two morale? It might not be a hell of a lot different to being blessed. You know, when all is said and done statistically, it might not actually work out to be much better. Um, it'll have a higher variance as well, like when the morale triggers, it means your unit is attacking a whole second time, which is awesome, but it doesn't trigger very often, whereas bless is just going to work all the time. All of your attacks are at maximum damage. Bless. Why would I do Mirth when I can just bless? So it goes here. Is it up here maybe? Just barely? No, I don't think so. It's just not that. It's, uh, it's just okay. I'm gonna squeeze it in here. Mirth. Mirth along Counter-Strike, you know. And again, I'm even looking at these view air. View, the, the views are moving up in the world. The views are actually all right compared to these. It's better than these. These are better than these, and so I have to just shuffle. I've got to be true to myself. We are picking up a lot of Ds, aren't we, though? Uh, right, there is one more. I can't believe this is a level 3 spell. Like, you're kidding me. It's level 3. Teleport. Very powerful spell. Very powerful spell on the battlefield. You can um, teleport your guys around. Now, here's the thing. If you're an expert water mage, you can actually jump behind castle walls. Um... Yeah, you need to be an expert for that to work. You're going to be an expert probably by the time you're casting this. And that lets you move, um, teleport into the castle and start wreaking havoc, which is really, really good if you've got an army composition where you do have a, one big nasty stack of, you know, the best unit I can think of for this would be behemoths, right? Which you just are going to stand outside the walls getting shot, waiting for an opportunity to do something. Teleport. Ooh. Game changer, right? Massive game changer. So very much... Um, uh, specific to a siege is where this shows up and wants to get used, but way just has, it's going to be so much more effective than earthquake, right? So we're not we're not a C minus. Is it better than these? Yeah, I think it's in this category up here. Teleport. I, I, I am going to have to move forgetfulness. It looks ridiculous there, obviously. Like it can't stay there. Um, teleport. Um. Yeah, let's put it up here. I think it's good enough to be up here, actually. In this sort of B-plus region. These are the kind of utility spells. You, you need them, you use them, but they don't break the game open. This is a spell that's cast off a lot less frequently, but when you do cast it, it's... Whoa! Not as good as Animate Dead. Okay, a little bit of power play going on. Ooh, I'm torn. Let's leave her about there. Teleport. Good spell. Okay. We're staying in the water school and moving to level four. And apologies again for messing up the order, but hopefully you guys will forgive me. This spell is good too. Uh, although, hmm, with an asterisk. This is clone. Okay, and what we do is get our best unit, or our most nasty unit, and copy it. Um, and if you're an expert water mage, you can copy archangels and dragons and stuff. Well, you can't. You probably can't copy dragons because of the, um, you know, um, immunity thing. But, well, but, but in general, if you're an expert water mage, you can pick any unit um, in your army and, and copy it. Uh, now, this works best on fast units that are about to swoop in and attack something and deal massive damage, or on uh, ranged units. The reason is that the clone dies as soon as uh, it takes any damage. So it's like a hologram. Um, uh, phantasmal image. Uh, for those uh, Magic the Gathering uh, aficionados. It's a phantasmal image of the... Um, it's a phantasmal image of the, of, the, of the unit. And yeah, if your opponent can't get to it... <laughs> like if you copy a huge stack of Grand Elves and um, just shoot away and there's, like, there's a bunch of melee guys... They can't get to the get to the copy and, and kill it or kill it with a magic arrow. Uh, then it's really really good. But you do need yeah you, you need things to go your way for that to work. Um, I'm minded to wedge it in here. Um, a 
little bit better there. I'm going to put it above shield. Uh, I'm going to just put it in here. I think it's okay. It's a, it's a good spell. Uh, I've used it plenty of times. Um, it's a late game spell. It doesn't take up room in my spell book when, you know, in the, in, in the earlier part of the game. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, worth, it's worth casting. And you can do good things with it. Right, still in water at level 4. We're talking about prayer. Prayer is just bless on speed. Uh, it does the blessing part. It does the mirth part. And I think it is also. it does also give a buff to speed. Yeah, it increases speed by 4, actually. So I think that's the only spell that does that, apart from haste. So, yeah, you get to go mirth, bless, haste, all in one go. And uh, I don't mind telling you, it's really good. Uh, it's, 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 it's great. If you've got a good, beefy, melee-ish army, um, go ahead, pray them, clone them, remove some obstacles, go and attack. Water, and the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm realising that make, make your opponents forget to shoot. The water school is kind of well configured for big melee armies. Um, more so than maybe I ever really thought about or realised. Is it better than teleport? Uh, no. Uh, yeah. Yes, it's a bit better than teleport. Um, let's pop it in there. Prayer is a B plus. I think I'm happy with that. It's not an A. Well, could it be an A minus? Prayer. Uh, we might need some rejigs. I'm not sure if I've got enough amazing spells up in the A's and S's yet, but uh, prayer isn't really an A grade spell, is it? No. I'm saying no. Right. There is one more. Oh, can you believe it? Water Walk allows your hero out on the adventure map to spend his turn walking around on water as if it was land. Um, now, the problem is, it sounds great, right? And there's lots of other adventure map breaking spells that we're going to talk about uh, coming up. There's three more uh, that we're going to talk about. Um, this is the worst one uh, of the four that do it. The problem is that it's often going to be the case that you could just use a boat uh, and waste a turn. So this thing is kind of saying, while travelling water, save a turn. How many turns does it take? It takes you a turn to get in the boat and a turn to get out of the boat. So technically it could save you two turns if you can just if you can see an enemy that you want to go and fight or a hero you want to go and tag on the other side of an estuary, uh, on the other side of a, you know, a, what do you want to call it, a, a fjord or an inlet or something like that, I can just walk over there and smash him right now with water walk. Whereas in a boat I'd have to get in the boat sit there, that's the end of my day, sail over and land on the beach, that's another day, and then I'm going to be finally ready to go and have my fight. But by then, it's like, you know, Battle of Hastings and stuff. Like, by then, the defenders are red, like, they've seen you coming. <laughs> Whereas with water, imagine that uh, King William, or whatever, yeah, King William, imagine that he could have just marched his army across the channel anytime he wanted, instead of waiting for months on end for the right weather and all you know, the rest of it. Like, um... So that's the upside of Water Walk. It, it's going to have those really corner cases. It's like, yes, I've got Water Walk. I can just punish this guy out of nowhere. But most of the time, it's just going to be the worst of the adventure map breaking spells for you. Um, it's going to be pretty rare that you're an expert Water Walker that doesn't know Summon Boat. <laughs> right. Uh, so for that reason, I think it might be a C... Really? Uh, something like that. I think I'd rather summon a boat than water walk, but if I know water walk, I'll water walk. Uh, you know what I mean? I'd, I'd rather have summon boat. I'd rather have a guaranteed access to summon boat in my journey than a guaranteed access to water walk. Um, I like it a bit better than bloodlust. Yeah, okay. All right, we're back on par. We're back on par. We've caught back to where we were supposed to be. We've done all of Tier 3, all of Tier 4s in air, all of Tier 4 in water. And now we're on to Tier 4 in fire, which is a really long list. It's as big as air level 2. And the first one, dun, 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 unbelievably, is Armageddon. And this is such a difficult spell to, to, to rate. Uh, it blows up the entire battlefield and kills everybody. That's what it does. 
sadly, you know, and for beginners in the game and people who are learning the game, as I was playing the game years ago, playing the campaigns, it's like, oh, you can cast a nuclear explosion? Whoa, I cannot wait to become an expert fire mage and cast Armageddon. But you can't use it. It murders your whole team. Like, it's an unusable spell. It's, it's, it's totally useless. It belongs as an F minus. Why would I want to blow up the whole battlefield? Like, okay, I might win the fight, but at the cost of just destroying my entire army? So, of course, very clever people have pointed out long ago that the idea is you have an army composition that is immune to Armageddon. And there's a few different creatures that are immune, like Phoenixes and Ifrits and, um, you know, Black Dragons, Gold Dragons, Magic Elementals. You just have a couple of them in your army and then you Armageddon and it deals more damage to a large army than any other spell in the game will. Um... So, fine. You know, like If you've got the opportunity to build towards that composition, um, go ahead and do that. So I almost don't want to raid it, because in a normal straight-laced game of Heroes of Might and Magic 3, uh, where you're going about your business, if it's a large map, by the time you've got this kind of Drakageddon thing going, the game will probably already be over. On an extra large map where you've got lots and lots of these upgraded level 7 units um, and you've got an opportunity to be an expert fire mage and get some leverage out of Armageddon, you know, it's really, really good um, like for that. So this happened to me a little bit with the Archangels in the last video where my experience of Archangels is I'm winning more with them a lot. Like I'm, w <laughs> they're, they're just mopping up the map after I've already kind of broken the back of the game and they're extremely expensive. They're not you know, turning the tide of the game from losing to winning because they cost five grand each and it's like, it's just how much utility do I get out of them? And that, that that's how I, that, that's the measure of how much I'd like to rate these spells and rate, rate the creatures in that video. Rating the spells in this video using the same method, how much utility am I getting out of Armageddon really on a day-to-day -day basis during the course of the campaign? It's not until I've specifically engineered that build around it that I get it. And I gave Archangels a B for that reason. It's just like, I don't know where to put you. I've got to put you somewhere. You're obviously not an F <laughs> uh, for that reason. But so I'm going to just awkwardly wedge it in here, knowing that tons of people are going to hate that. But um, hopefully I've explained why, uh, you know, it's not finding its way into um, the special tier uh, for that reason. No one's obviously arguing the power level of the spell in, in terms of the impact it has when you you cast it in that happy time that you've configured your your army appropriately. Now I have to make sure I get these right. Oh, there's, there's two spells that look the same, Frenzy and Berserk. I think this one is Frenzy. And I'm just going to double check to be absolutely sure. Um, I've got the wiki next to me here. No, that one's Berserk. Okay, well we'll talk about Berserk first then. I was wrong. This is Berserk, then, yeah, and then there's another one called Frenzy we'll talk about in a second. So, Berserk. Now, Berserk is a really cool spell. Um, what happens is you pick an enemy and you make him Berserk. Normally, Berserk is a word used in these types of games um, where, you know, you picture it being a buff on your own guy. Like, you know, the Vikings would go berserk. It's, it's, you, it's like the Bloodlust. You would expect this spell to do something like what Bloodlust does. It's the opposite. Okay, what it does instead is... Well, it's not the opposite. Pick an enemy unit and make them berserk, and what they'll do is they will attack whoever is closest, which will usually be one of their friends, especially if you've cast it cleverly on a sensible target. And that's massive. That's, a, that's like blind, but better. Right, it's it's better than blind. It's kind of what it's it's what we wish hypnotize was. With hypnotize, the difference is you actually get to control the unit. This thing's uncontrollable. It will just attack whoever's closest. I don't know how it does tie breaking, whether it picks friend or foe as a tiebreaker, or if it's just RNG. Um, as you become an expert fire mage, not only instead of targeting one, this is a really peculiar thing with berserk. You can. Uh, the, 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 the spell becomes an AoE and it grows into a 7 hex thing when you're advanced and it grows to 19 hexes which I imagine is 3 uh, a radius of 3 um, if I've sat and thought about it long enough I'd convince myself that it is um, and which means you can actually berserk half of their army and, they'll, and, and berserk units will attack each other without realising that each other is berserked and I've used this to quite good effect against gigantic armies that don't have a hero supporting them 
um, things like nagas, um, basilisks, things like that, where they're on their way over to you, and when they get here, it's going to be really bad. They're going to n- annihilate us. But not if you berserk them all, and they're all just attacking each other, and you're just throwing whatever else you've got at them, lightning bolt, whatever, chain lightning maybe. Uh, so yeah, Berserk is a really cool spell, a really fun spell. Um, does require a few things to go right. You need the enemy not to have Dispel and Cure. You need to not be embroiled in combat. You can't have all your units in amongst all their units in this fracar and then go Berserk. It just won't work. The Berserk guys will still just attack your guys. So for that reason, I'm not going to give it an A. Or maybe I could. Maybe I could be start to be a bit more generous with these spells. I think I'm going to start getting a bit more generous with these spells, right? I, I love these, and they're so uh, perennial and awesome. But there's a couple of spells here where I'm really looking at them going, yeah, you guys actually probably could be called A-grade spells. Um, and I think maybe we could make these a, a, A-grade spells. Animate Dead Prayer. Berserk is, is a really, really good spell. Um, and, and there's a fun factor too, like with Forgetfulness. There's a huge fun factor with Berserk. Watching all of their guys attack each other is just like... <laughs> uh, love it, you know? Absolutely love it. Um, the next spell on my list is actually Fire Shield. We'll talk about Frenzy now in a second. I don't know why that is. It's just the order that they appear... Uh, in this menu that I've had to look at. So Fire Shield um, does like what the Ifrit Sultan's Fire Shield does. Um, It might even be the exact same thing. Um, And whatever damage the unit takes is dealt back uh, at a ratio of 30%. Which, okay, yeah. So, okay, I want to hurt your unit. One way of doing that is I cast a Fire Shield on my guy, so if you attack me, you're going to take damage back. Another way of doing that is just lightning bolting your ass. Right, I can just lightning bolt, yeah. If I cast Fire Shield on one of my seven units, my opponent will just attack one of the other six. Fire Shield on the Ifrit Sultans isn't even that big a deal. Like, it's not really... Like, it does... It's annoying when you when you do a massive attack on a big pile of Ifrit Sultans and they deal a big Fire Shield thing back at you. It's like, oh, it's annoying. It's an extremely annoying ability. But am I really going out of my way to make to give one of my troops a 30% fire shield? On yeah, like I'm not going to do that in the late game, and it's a fourth level spell. Um, so I'm sorry, fire shield. I think you're actually down here. Um, are you worse than fire water? It's probably about the same. Like they're just not very good. Fire shields just aren't worth the. It would be different if you if you're when you cast it, it put a shield on all of your whole army. Like, this is normal shield, right? Normal shield reduces the damage coming in by 30%. This thing reflects 30% back. Well, why can't it be level 4 and it does all of your troops instead of just one troop? Maybe that's too powerful, a little bit back. Compared to some of the other spells we're talking about, it, like, it wouldn't be that insane, right? It would probably need to be nerfed a little bit if it affected all stacks. It's 30%, maybe it needs to be 20%. Of it. Anyway, I don't know. Um, but not a very good spell. Um, and there's a bit of this going on in fire, I'm afraid, at the top. This next one is called Frenzy. Um, I don't cast it, so I needed to look up and remember what the heck it does. Increases your attack rating um, by... That's right, that's right, this is what this does. I can't... Yeah, this is a problem, right? This is a design problem for me. Uh, It's a bad spell. Okay, Frenzy increases your attack by 100% and reduces your defense to zero. If you're an expert fire mage, it increases your attack to 200% and reduces your defense to zero. Um, There are going to be situations where, yes, the enemy has one big annoying stack of creatures, and you've got one good opportunity to hit it with a decent creature, and you work work out the math, and it's like, you know what, expert frenzy here just wins the game. Sure, that will happen. But you know what else could happen instead? Before you attack, if you're going to cast a spell... Just cast Lightning Bolt. <laughs> Does the same thing. Now on the crackback, if if you calculate wrong with Frenzy, on the crackback you have defense zero. <laughs> and your defense is... This is the thing. Almost always there's going to be other units on the battlefield that are going to point and look at you and say, hmm, that's interesting. I see that you now have defense zero. 
How long does it last? It doesn't like it's. Yeah, I think the whole idea with this is it's multi-turn. It's like you know, prayer or bless. Like you're frenzied. Once you're frenzied, you're frenzied. You deal massive damage, but uh, you get destroyed in 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 response. Um, so I don't know. Maybe is it for archers? Maybe it'd be amazing on archers that face no. Like if you're in a situation against wandering monsters. And you've got just tons of Grand Elves. Frenzy's probably great, actually. Right? Really ends the game quickly. Much, much better than Lightning Bolt. Fine. There, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's an example of an application for it. But it's almost exhausting telling people... Like, uh, like, I'm trying to explain just how... I, like, uh, So, because I could... <laughs> I've successfully thought of <laughs> an application for it. So, I, I'm going to let it live down here. And we'll just do a quick um, editing um, tweak to make it work. And we have Inferno. Just had a little graphical hiccup there. I hope that looks all right. Still looks okay. Inferno uh, is a big fireball. So there's fireball. There's Inferno. They do the, basically the same idea, except the Inferno takes up more hexes. Maybe it's the 19 hexes or whatever. And it deals more damage. I often find, though, that the Inferno, it's hard to place it in a surgical way that really makes sure that I aren't, I'm not incinerating my own guys. Um, and a big part of my design beef with the vanilla game is that, in particular the Inferno Town, it would be good if the Inferno troops, apart from just the Ifrits, were immune to uh, the effects of fireballs and Infernos. I think it would help make that town a little bit less clunky. Uh, and obviously that that is the town that's the kind of the... Uh, I keep using that phrase poster child I should stop I, I, I should mix up my dialogue a little bit and use different metaphors but it's the it's the main town that wants to be fiery and cast fire magic um, anyway so there's a bit of a relationship there between fire magic and the inferno I yeah inferno is okay um, you will use it more uh, in the late game than a lot of the other late game spells we've talked about uh, am I more excited about it than... I think it's probably in this area. It's okay. I'm going to be casting Inferno. It's kind of a B-. minus. I'm going to give it a B-, B-, B- and do the formatting. Okay, that's Inferno. Next we have Slayer. Cool artwork of the guy, you know, on, on his knees with his massive sword and he's just killed this huge monster. Um, now, uh, unlike the band Slayer... Uh, this is not good. Um, this is not a good spell. Um, as for the band, you should be listening to Slayer uh, while playing Heroes 3 as much as possible, although I will also just acknowledge that the original music of the game, Heroes 3, is among the best composition in any computer game ever. Uh, and, you know, I can't even think what else. Maybe Command & Conquer, the original Command & Conquer of 1995, uh, can 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 compete with it? I don't know, but just amazing soundtrack in um, in Heroes Three. Just another reason. Oh man, it's just such a good game. Everything about it. Um, however, unlike the Band Slayer, the spell is yeah, terrible. Like so, I actually even had to look up to remember how bad it is. It gives plus eight to your attack strength, but uh, for for a single unit. So you're saying to me, okay, but surely by the time I'm an expert fire mage, it, it gives that to all units. Uh, no, it doesn't. It still only affects one unit, and it's still just plus eight. All that being an expert does is widen the monsters that it affects. So Slayer doesn't just give you plus eight when you're attacking gremlins. It only works on dragons and angels and tier seven stuff. And then being an expert just means that it also works on all the other tier seven units. So it's so ridiculously situational. Like, it's so cornerstone. Instead of all of that, I could just bless my whole army. Massively increase. I could just prayer, right? Or I could... Anything. Bloodlust is better than this. <laughs> it's just... Like, this just does nothing. It's just so bad. At tier four, like... So disappointing. Um, so, I get, like, it's, it's with a heavy heart. Like, because Slayer... I don't know why this particular tile is a bit big. I might just shrink it a bit. Um, it's just such a shame because it's such a cool concept, you know. 
Um, but you're not casting it ever. I, I don't think. I mean, maybe. Does it deserve a, a gap from the other F tier, F tier stuff? I, I don't think it does. It's just not a good spell. Uh, I can't remember ever casting it or ever wanting to. There's al almost always going to be something better you can do as a buff. Slayer, really, as, a, as an idea, should be that you turn one of your... If, you, if it's only going to affect one of your units, it needs to make that unit an absolute yeah, nightmare. And uh, not just plus eight attack strength. Like, come off it. It's just not good enough. I get myself all worked up, and it's not necessary. I don't... I shouldn't... I shouldn't. Right? It's a video game. Like, calm down. Not you guys. I'm talking about myself here. Um, which I like doing. Uh, let's move on. Tier 4 in the Earth School. And this is where things start to go a little bit bonkers. Uh, and there's some room in the S tier for a very bespoke and specific reason, uh, which is that the Earth School starts to get crazy. Um, the first cab off the rank is Meteor Shower. Is it actually Meteor Storm, you ask? I think it's Meteor Shower is the name of the spell, and it's an AoE spell that deals big damage. Meteor Shower is the name of the spell. It deals serious damage. Um, the radius is smaller than Inferno, but the damage is higher. And because your expert Earth Mage also is probably going to know Resurrect, if you accidentally Meteor Shower your own guy, you're probably going to, if you're in control of things, you're probably going to be able to resurrect him uh, later on. So, or, you know, towards the end of the combat. Meteor Shower... Great spell. Really, really good spell. Um, it's an A-grade spell. I'm going to put it behind these other evergreen, cool um, spells in the uh, other three schools, though. Uh, just because otherwise Earth's just going to end up occupying the entire top half of the uh, diagram. Which brings me to Resurrection. <sighs> resurrection! Every person who knows this game prays for resurrection. Well, <laughs> I shouldn't say that. It sounds blasphemous. I mean, in a world, don't we all? Um, resurrection is awesome. The heroes that start with resurrection are coveted. You want to hire the heroes that know resurrection, or Alamar or whatever they are. Uh, whoever the, whatever they're different. I, I, I should know the names of the heroes who have it better than I do. Alamar, I think, is the wrong guy. He's a... Uh, and, uh, I'm not sure. Um, the idea is you're... Your enemy, your, your uh, allied troops have taken a pounding. They can even be dead. You don't even, even need any left on, alive on the battlefield. You cast Resurrection targeting the dead corpses, and they all come back as if none of this ever happened. And if you've got plenty of spell points and plenty of time, you can take on some really nasty enemies and just be like, Resurrection. You can time your Resurrection just so, so that you really completely minimise losses while walking through lots and lots of different wandering monsters. With, um, I had this combo in the last campaign where I had Resurrection and the Shackles of War and I was able to, at my leisure, the enemy hero couldn't run away, I'd murdered almost almost all of their soldiers and I'm just busy resurrecting everything. And then when I'm ready, only when I'm ready, will I kill the last stack because you can't escape because of the Shackles. So I've got all the time. The Shackles allowed me all this time to resurrect things at my leisure, and I was taking minimal casualties and walking through the late game as a result of it. It almost felt unfair. Uh, and it was unfair, to be fair. Uh, is it as good as slow? Is it uh, as important as slow? Uh, I think I want to put it above slow. Resurrection, man. Resurrection. Yeah, it's that good. It's that good. It's it's so special. It's amazing. You can just break the game open. It's like heal, but uber heal. There's a, like the only other healing in the game, apart from Anime Dead, is Cure, and Cure just heals such a small amount of HP. They, the game almost needs like another medium Cure, like a big Cure for one stack. Resurrection is just insane, though, right? Like you you heal massive HP if you've got plenty of spell points. Like what you get back is really really good, relative to what you um, have to spend in terms of spell points. Okay, let's keep moving. Uh, this is an interesting one. A, a tier 4 earth spell that isn't insanely good. Uh, and in fact, it's insanely bad. This is Sorrow. Sorrow decreases the morale of the enemy uh, soldiers. At expert level, all of the stacks are reduced by 2. Uh, this is kind of the opposite of Mirth. 
Um, I... The guys must have patched this in the community version of the game. I don't know. But I cast Sorrow at expert level in the last campaign I was in. And my opponents were all on neutral morale and I cast Sorrow and it didn't do anything. It didn't make them unhappy. So unlike with the luck thing we talked about before, uh, with Fortune and Misfortune, where you can't have negative luck, so what's the point of misfortuning something that is already at zero? Well, the answer is there isn't. It turns out the same problem happens, though, with Sorrow. You can't turn a neutral uh, army into a deeply depressed army, even though negative morale is a thing in the game. So it's such a strange quirk of the game. I don't know why it was made that way, but this spell is not Sorrow. The graphic is misleading you, okay? It's false advertising. You can't make the army sad. All you can do is make them less happy. So that means they already need to be happy in the first place in order for the spell to work. So look... And this happened with the Magogs in the previous video. The way the game ships, the way it's played when you download it um, in the Shadow of Death version, the spell is terrible. Um, it's less terrible than these, all right, because it could be the case that you're up against an enemy knight where his whole army is at plus three morale, and you're looking at Crusaders and stuff going, oh, God, Sorrow might actually be a thing. It might be a thing. Um, it might be a thing. I, it might be a thing. It might sometimes show up as a thing. So maybe E minus, okay, for sorrow. But uh, oh man, like terrible, <laughs> terrible. There's one more level four spell left to talk about, people. And I'm just going to leave it here. It's at F. Not even going. Let's move on. I am joking, of course. This is oh my god, town portal, right? is one of the big four adventure map cheats uh, of the game. We've got War to Walk, Town Portal, and two air spells that we're going to learn about now in a minute. Um, what this allows you to do is teleport. If you if you don't know anything about um, Earth magic, you can teleport to the nearest town. Okay. Um, and I don't know what the difference is between being a basic Earth Mage and not knowing Earth magic. Uh, exactly, but you teleport to the nearest town. By the time you get up to Expert Earth Mage, you get a reduced um, movement uh, point cost, because it does deduct movement points when you do it, um, and you are allowed to go anywhere. Oh, the, uh, the, sorry, the advanced effect does that too. As long as you're advanced or expert, you get to go to any town on the map, provided there's no hero standing in the front uh, entrance of it. And obviously that's something that you is within your control. Now I should rephrase that. It's not as good as what I just said. You can't invade an enemy town from... And like It's not like... You can't just teleport uh, to war straight away with an enemy. But you can teleport to any friendly town. Now on an expert... Uh, I always get that wrong. On an extra large map, this spell is the best of the bunch. It's the best of the big four uh, adventure map cheat... Uh, movement cheats uh, that you can get. Um... Because you can cast it multiple times a day, you can visit your entire empire with your best hero in one day, hoover up all of the creatures you want. Oh, I haven't learned Chain Lightning yet. That's over in the remote corner of my empire. I'll just teleport over there and learn it for the cost of a few movement points and a bit of mana. You're also, you can, you've got the discretion of ending your turn in a town and replenishing all of your mana. If one of your towns is a dungeon with the mana vortex, you can just visit it on the way amidst your journey and earn double your spell point. You just get the best of everything. You just get to go all around your empire having the best of everything. If someone comes near one of your towns, your army can be on the other side of the planet and you'll teleport back and gallop out and murder them. Um, it's an extremely powerful spell. It's a ridiculous spell. I can't even believe... Like it's. It should be you can only do it once or twice a day or something. It's too good. Um, how special is it? Is it more special than blind? Um, I think it is. It is, it is, it is, right? It's just so good. I can't stop talking about how good it is. Did I talk for this long for blind? Maybe we should measure how good a spell is by how long I talk about it. Um, is it better than blind? Which one causes me more ecstasy? A town portal. Town portal does win that fight. Okay. It's just so good. Un unbelievable spell. Um, it's almost at a level where 
you know, I might in I might start in my future run throughs nerfing it myself or like intentionally not taking it or something. I don't know. It's like it's extremely broken. Powerful spell. Um anyway, let's move on. We have to cycle back up to air, school of air to finish off our list with um the level five uh spells. So the next cab off the rank is actually another one of these cheats, uh map cheats, the dimension door. Dimension Door costs 25 mana, and you get to literally do what this looks like. Um, you can teleport through cliffs uh, over the other side of water, like Water Walk. Um, obviously, it has more applications than Water Walk, right? Because there's more places you can go than Water Walk would allow. Um, you can cast it multiple times in a turn as well. Um, and similarly to Town Portal, it uses a little bit of movement points as you do it, but uh, the amount of map you can cover is massively increased, as long as you've got the mana. It's 25, 25 spell points per hit. Is it cheaper if you're an expert? Uh, is it cheaper if you're an expert uh, to Dimension Door? No, it just it increases the amount of times you can do it per day. You can do it four times a day as an expert, but you can only do it like twice a day as a um, as a as a moron. Um, yeah, this spell again, highly coveted breaking open the adventure map, getting your heroes to move around where you need them to move, uh, doing what you need them to do. Awesome. Uh, special spell, I'm saying. It's a really, really good spell. Um, but it's it's not Town Portal. It's, it's not as special as that. I'm going to have it down here in the bottom of the special. It counts as special, but... Uh, there's special and then there's... Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, right next door to Dimension Door is another spell which kind of blends Water Walk and Dimension Door, which is Fly. You can cast this spell and allow your hero to fly around as though obstacles weren't there. However, in the underground caverns, if there's an impassable chunk, like there's a piece of cavern here and a piece of cavern there, uh, you can't fly through rock, um, So whereas you can Dimension Door through the rock. Um... Now, it's almost always going to be the case that Dimension Door is better. However, there could be a scenario where you're on this surface and you've got a bunch of errands to run, and the errands are all at different places past different obstacles. You can just cast Fly and fly around and do them all and come back to where you started or land wherever. Whereas with Dimension Door, you need to cast it four times. That's 100 spell points, whereas the Fly would only cost you 20 spell points. So there will be applications where Fly is better than Dimension Door, but generally speaking, it's not as good as Dimension Door. Um, however, if I get one of these three spells, I'm really happy. Right? It's what I'm moving. Oh my god, yes, get me that spell so that I can start doing broken things on the adventure map. So it does need to find its way up uh, into the special ranking. But I'm going to demote it down here. It's not quite as good as Dimension Door. Um, it's kind of the poor man's version um, of Dimension Door. Okay, I can't believe this is a fifth level spell. This next thing. Anti. No, it's not anti magic, it's magic mirror. Okay, look, I, th I think this has been changed by the community in the, in the upgrade, uh, the community uh, patch. Um, the vanilla version of the game, what this allows you to do is that. We talked before about anti magic, this spell here, right? Which makes it so that a single enemy, uh, a single allied troop is immune. You can't be targeted by anything. So, okay, cool. What this does is it gives that, instead of that, it gives the stack of creatures a 40% chance to reflect the spell back at a random enemy. So let's say you're facing an implosion. 60% of the time, the implosion gets through and kills your stack. 40% of the time, it gets redirected to who knows where. Maybe a useful enemy, maybe not. Which one would I rather have? Which one is more manageable? Which one actually has a better... Um, long-term value uh, as, you know, like I'd, it's kind of like what's wrong with Slayer and or not Slayer, uh, Frenzy and stuff. It's like, well, I'd, I don't want to just go all in and cross my fingers that the mirror works. Like, the mirror needs to work 100% of the time. There you're talking. If the thing reflected spells 100% of the time, it's a way better version than of, of anti-magic. Okay, it would be ridiculous to, for, for it to work on every... Uh, soldier in your army. It still should be a single stack target, okay, but you could do broken things with that, right? You could really you could really break break the game open. 
Uh, my doorbell rang there and I'd lost my flow, but I was really giving off about this spell. Uh, magic Mirror uh, at 40%. It would work better. You know what would work is if the spell was... If, is if the stack was immune, like anti-magic, and then on top of that it had a 40% chance of reflecting. So it... Like, you, you would want the prevention part to work all the time. And then sometimes there's this upside of a reflection. So it's a strict upgrade to anti-magic. Instead, 60% of the time, the spell just does nothing. The, sp the, the, the enemy spell gets through. And the enemy... Like, the same problem with anti-magic. The, en the enemy can just choose to target somebody else. You know? So... This spell, I think, I'm a little bit out of breath because I ran up and down the stairs there to answer the door. So this spell is in the F category. We are going to need to start stratifying this F category out, aren't we? I mean... Okay, let's start doing that. Um, I think it's worse than Slayer, and I think it's worse than Misfortune. Um, is it worse than Protection from Water? Yeah. <laughs> I think it is. Uh, I think it is, right? Let me just double check what it actually does. I don't think I've ever cast it. Magic Mirror. Enemy spells cast on the targeted allied troop has a 40% chance of being redirected. Uh, I'm just never casting that. Like, I'm, al I'm always finding something better to cast than that. Uh... Yep. I just need to resize it as well on top of that. It's just really stress level five. It's a level five spell. <laughs> I mean, it's so it's just garbage. Uh, um, I don't know why I'm getting so emotional about it. I need to just get a grip. Uh, hang on, I'm just trying to resize this as well. I struggled a little bit with the tile sizings. I don't think it looks quite as neat as the creatures one did. Um, let me just see how it looks for you guys on this other second screen. It looks okay, right? I mean, it looks okay. Oh, it looks all right. Uh, so that's Magic Mirror. There is one air spell left to talk about, which is Summon Air Elemental. Okay, this cool guy, like a genie coming out of a bottle. So there are four of these across the five school... Uh, four of these across the four schools at level five. Um, summon Air, Summon Water, Summon Fire, Summon Earth, and all of the basic elementals are all kind of similar, kind of mediocre. Um... I don't remember what the rules are around keeping your elementals. I think is that you get to keep them. I can't remember how this works. Yeah, no, I get this confused with resurrection. You don't get to keep them, right? So you can't just start uh, summoning elementals in every fight and just build up a gigantic pile of them. Um, they're there for the fight that you're in. Now, the problem I have is normally by the time I'm a big, powerful air mage, I don't need to build it. I don't want to waste my... I don't want to waste the fight building an army on the fly, you know? And all the elementals, they're just basic ground units. The air elemental here doesn't have flying. Um, it's a ground unit. The fire elemental doesn't have flying. The water elemental is a piece of garbage, takes up two hexes, movement five. And the earth elemental is a walking joke. It's like the worst unit in the game. How often do I... I'm not going to use them. Like, I like... I'm not going to need. I'm not going to need to summon myself a huge pile. Sometimes you do, right? In, 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 if you're up against an enemy hero and you're out in the adventure map and it's a normal adventure map um, combat with no castle, having a big pile of mean elementals that can walk into the middle of the pitch and do something is fine. It's okay, right? It's okay. And so, actually, I think we've found a place for. Uh, We've, we've found some spells that can start filling up this C category. It's okay. Okay, but at that stage of the game, I'm going to be doing some spectacular things with my mana. I'm going to be doing Chain Lightning. I'm going to be, you know, spending... I'm going to be Town Portaling three times before I enter combat. Um, I'm going to be teleporting my stuff. That kind of thing, you know what I mean? Um... But I think it's all right. Am I being too harsh on it? Maybe they deserve to be a little bit higher up. And these are the ones that deserve to go down. Something like that. And again, I just wish that all the sizings were a little bit more uniform. A bit of pernickety perfectionism coming out there. Never mind. All right, and uh, that is the end of the School of Air. And there's only one level 5 water spell, and it's Summon Water Elemental. Uh, I hate water elementals. 
Um, I don't really like them. I hate Earth more. So I think what I'm going to do is make a little home here for the elementals. And water is going to be the third worst one. And we're done with the water school. Fire has two spells at level five. Before we get to the fire elemental, first we have to talk about this one. Sacrifice. Oh, man. I have never got this to work. Like, it's fire. The school of fire has so many of these... Okay, so the, here's the trick, and again, I'm going to shamelessly pull up the wiki as well um, you, while I'm waxing about it, as if, like, yeah, you should, oh, shouldn't you know this? You, you know, I'm claiming to be someone who's played the game for, t for like, all, for all this time. Yes, I am. I can't make this spell work. I've never made this spell work. Target non-undead troopers sacrificed, and then another target dead troop. It has to be dead, by the way. It can't just be wounded. Uh, is increased its health by a bunch of the blah 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 whatever your power level plus whatever the destroyed creatures base health was plus a little bit more multiplied by the number of creatures and if you're an expert the bonus is a bit more man it, so it's a small siphon effect like the amount of health you get back is 10 more than the health that's destroyed in the sacrifice creature uh, and then, as a starting point, plus your power on top of that. Uh, oh, hang on, no, that's actually... So, yeah, that could be... So, yeah, so you've got power 20. Um, and the destroyed creatures', creatures base health is, say, f 5, if you pick a crap unit. Um, you get 35 back. Okay, yeah, right, hang on, right. So, look, okay. Ugh. Right, fine. You sacrifice a stack to bring back a dead stack. The, but here's the problem, right? And yes, you get more... What I'm trying to say is you do get a lot more HP back than you sacrifice. Here's the problem. You need a dead stack of really valuable allies. So this is happening at a time when you're getting, mur you're getting murdered by the AI, by your opponent. Like, your opponent has... You've got a pile of seven dead archangels on the battlefield. Or maybe if it's in, in the fire school, we, we could imagine that it's a, but, but a pile of archdemons. So you're in a situation where, okay, I've got to pick one of my surviving troops, sacrifice them, to turn them into archdevils. And it won't work if the Archdevil is on, like, if you've still got one out of the seven, you can't cast, you have to wait till he's dead. Oh, like, it's just so clunky. I, I, I just, I've never been able to make it work. I've never found a way to make it work. It might be that it's, oh yeah, Paul, like, this is, this is a great spell. You, the, the strategy is you charge in with your best unit, you let it die, and then you have some stuff in the background ready to sacrifice. Maybe, I don't know. I've never seen it done, I, and I've never done it. I feel like I've been a lot more opinionated, um, you know, on some of these spells about how bad, like, you know, I wasn't this mean to the creatures, although Earth Elementals, oh, don't get me started. Um, I just don't think Sacrifice, like, it's got to be better than these other things here, right? Like, there must be some application for it. Some talented player knows how to use it and break it, but not me. So I'm just going to leave it down here. The final spell in the, fire school, in the fire school is the Fire Elemental, which we made a home for just here. He's slower than this, I think, so, but he does more damage. I don't know. Anyway, maybe these two should swap over. Uh, in the Earth School, let's do these in reverse order to what I've got here. The Earth Elemental is here. Summoning a bunch of Earth Elementals might be relevant sometimes, uh, even though I don't like the unit in terms of training them in the Conflux. You might summon some Elementals in the vanilla game. Uh, sometimes and be happy with that. You know, they'll in, in a protracted fight, they'll walk out into the field and do something. Um, so we'll, we'll leave the, the summon elementals right there in the Bang of Sea. And then we have one last spell to talk about in the Earth School, which is Implosion. And Implosion is the single uh, greatest damage dealing spell in the game it deals more damage than any other spell to a single uh, stack of enemies in the late game basically it's just the go-to choice like for, for for an earth mage um uh, sometimes you'll pick 
meteor shower instead if uh, the situation calls for it with AoE. But between the two of them, um, oh, implosion is just incredible. Like it deals so much damage, um, and it's so crippling because it's level five. It works on gold dragons. Uh, it works on well all the dragons except black dragons. Uh, oh man, it's just so powerful, and you're just so often building that fifth level mage guild going implosion, 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 implosion. So it's special. It's really special. Um, how special? This is a toughie. Um, um, no. Oh. I've decided that I, I think I've come to a decision. I've decided that I love blind too much. Uh, and I'm going to put it behind it. I'm going to put Implosion behind Blind. Uh, and that might just be me being a hopeless romantic. I don't know. Uh, oh, even I'm torn. I'm so torn. Even between all three of these for who gets the top spot. But I'm sticking with what I've got. I'm going to put it behind Blind. And let that be the way it is. You know, that that's my score. So Town Portal, we're finished. So Town Portal is the best spell in the game. Blind is the second best. Implosion is the third best. And really, between these three, it is close. It is it is really close. Um, Resurrection and Slow, not far behind at all. Dimension Door and Fly are both special spells. Uh, and I don't consider them to be as special... I'm going to leave, even though there's some blank space on the map, I'm going to leave it there because I'm trying to indicate the gaps of awesomeness that, that exist between each stage. So I couldn't find a B+. Plus. Instead, they've found their way to, into A-, minus, this kind of thing. Um, I might actually demote prayer. That's something. That, that'll help visually, actually. I think prayer... I'm okay with B+, plus for prayer. So I will make that tweak. Um, yeah. Okay with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually okay with all of the rest of where A is sitting. I'm just doing a bit of a sweep through. I didn't really do much of this with in the creatures build, um, or the, the, the creatures tier list. Uh, I didn't really sweep through and do a lot of changes at the very end. Where maybe looking back at it, I might have uh, clone. Yeah, I don't know how to score Armageddon. Like it's I might just move him west. Clone's a little bit better than this. I think I'm happy with the rest of it. Let me have a look at how that panned out at the end. I hope on whatever device you guys are watching that this looks okay. I suppose also before we um, sign off, we should talk about what the ranking of the schools are, the four schools of magic. Um, well, I think it's probably fairly obvious to anyone who's watched the whole video that Earth is the best. Earth is the best, and it's not even close. Earth is by far the best, okay? Absolutely by far the best. Town Portal, Implosion, Resurrection, Slow. Need I go on? Meteor Shower, Animate Dead. And then, okay, I'm into Shield at that point after that. But, like, those spells just blow the competition out of the water. Earth's the best. Now, instead of saying what's second, well, what's worst? Fire is worst. Fire is worst by far. All the big spells that find their way to the bottom. Frenzy, Landmine, Misfortune, Slayer... Fire shield, firewall, fireball is boring, like, right? Um, the reason fire is easily the worst, though, is that it's very, very, very best spell in blind is not really a fire spell. Blind is an everybody spell. Everyone can get massive value out of blind, which makes the fire school and studying fire magic one of the most pointless uh, things you can do as a secondary skill. Um, so fire is the worst, earth's the best. Now, with air and water being in the middle, which one's better? I habitually tend to fall on the side of air. And the reason is that you've got... Well, even you can see here from the way we've scaled this, right? The big damage spells. Lightning Bolt Chain, Lightning. Awesome, right? Dimension Door and Fly beat Water Walk. Lightning Bolt beats Ice Bolt. You have this recurring theme, you know, where air's just a bit better than, than water. Now, there is a bit of an exception. Bless, I think, probably is better than Haste. And prayer is very good. 
You also have cool things like teleport and clone going on. Uh, and that's actually quite nice to have that. Uh, summon boat, that utility that air doesn't have. You know, and air's got, you know, stuff like Counter-Strike, Precision, Hypnotize that don't really hit the mark. So I think it actually wears down to being pretty close between air and water. Um, but if pushed into a corner and forced to pick one, I'd go for air. So I think the order of events is earth, air, water, fire, uh, from best to worst. I hope you have enjoyed, uh, if you've watched the whole video through, I hope you've enjoyed uh, the session and it's been a kind of a chill out experience, which is really my intention, uh, to uh, sort of step through this amazing game, I'll talk about the game, talk about the spells, it's just such a cool game, I could talk about it all day. It's as much of a, it's a, it's much of a therapy thing for me as, um, as anything else. Uh, so my gratitude if I've had your company through the whole thing, I really do appreciate it. I got uh, quite a lot of comments on the creatures tier list. Uh, a lot of people, you know, really agreeing with me and saying how um, absolutely right I was. Um, some of you, however, I can't. I don't know the best way of rationalising this. Some of you disagreed with me, <laughs> like, like, uh, which, uh, in all seriousness, I. Um, is exactly the kind of thing I'm trying to uh, drum up here. I'm trying to drum up some controversy, get people talking, get people engaging on the channel. Uh, really makes it worthwhile for me. So um, to all of those uh, who you've already probably been replied to by me on the comments of the last video, who've commented, thank you very much. And if you'd like to uh, get involved in the conversation, tell me how much of a moron I am uh, and how wrong I am about these rankings. Um, hit me up. Let's let's go. Let's talk it through. Let's 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 hash it out in the comments. Love to hear from you. Um, but look, that's it for now. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you all again for the next one. Bye for now.